Hello, all my beautiful little unicorns, and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time that you're on my channel, my name is Vanessa Samina, and I'd like to welcome you into the fam. Hang on, you guys, something's missing. All right, you guys, now that everything is complete, allow for me to guide you into your pick a card tarot reading. So whether you are a longtime subscriber or this is the very first time that you're in this mystical space, I would like you to know that I have prepared these four individual groups in order to help you uncover the next unexpected surprises that are coming straight to you. And how this video works is that in just a moment's time, I will introduce you to these four groups and then I would like you to proceed to pick whichever group resonates with you, whether it's the colors, the crystals, the deck, or a combination of all of the above. Go with whichever group that you feel naturally drawn towards. You guys, this chai with oat milk, pure bliss. I live for these moments. The group that you most naturally feel drawn towards is going to be the perfect group for you to receive your reading from. So let's get into the four groups that I've got prepared for you, shall we? Group number one corresponds to the human spirit oracle as well as the aquamarine crystal. Group number two corresponds to the Tazama African tarot deck as well as the orange calcite crystal. Group number three corresponds to the Cosmic Oracle as well as the Smoky Quartz Crystal. And group number four corresponds to the Gold Foil Tarot Deck as well as the Pyrite Crystal. But the timestamps to all four of these groups can be found below in the description box as well as pinned to the top of the comment section for quick and easy access from your mobile devices, your tablets, and even your TVs, because you guys know the Unicorn Mom did not come to play. My videos are all available to you in 4K, which is the highest resolution, because my beautiful Unicorn Army deserves nothing less. So now I'll give you a little moment of privacy so you can meditate on the four groups. Feel free to pause the video right here if you need a little bit of extra time to choose the perfect group for you. And then I'll be right back to guide you into your readings. All right, my beautiful souls. So we will get into your reading, starting off with the first group, which corresponds to the Human Spirit Oracle deck and the Aquamarine Crystal. So if this is the group that you chose, then please simply continue watching. I also just want to point out that I'm taking my sweet time with all four of these groups. So get ready to lean back, relax, and enjoy, or put this reading on in like a podcast style. I know a lot of you like to listen to my readings in that form. And to all of my other beautiful groups, your timestamp can be found below in the description box as well as pinned to the top of the comment section. I will catch you at the click of your timestamps. Hello group number one and welcome to your reading. Now you chose the human spirit oracle as well as the aquamarine crystal and I didn't want to say it during the intro but look at our ring and nail combo alongside this deck and crystal. I mean it is just made to be, isn't it? So this is the beautiful aquamarine. And you may be asking yourself, wait, what? Aquamarine, isn't it usually kind of blue? Well, there are different shades when it comes to aquamarine. Some are a little bit more greenish, such as this one, and some are more blue. It kind of depends where it's sourced from and also what the quality and grade is because aquamarine, especially even really tiny ones used in jewelry can be so expensive, even more than other super precious gemstones. It is definitely a rare crystal and you may have chosen this stone because you need a little bit of tranquility group number one like someone or something has been stressing you out and you just need a little bit of escapism and I'm here to provide that for you group number one I am here to help you escape from your current reality or from certain things that are going on in your current reality that you don't want to think about every second of the day you just want to focus on the next unexpected surprises coming your way that are positive that are exciting 
and that kind of make you live in the future rather than be attached to the past. You now, creating your own new personal reality by living in the thoughts of what you want to create rather than living in the thoughts of your worries. But anyways, enough talking, group number one. Let's get into it. First up, we have got any way the wind blows. And this card corresponds to the number one. The number one is always a number of new beginnings, of initiation, of creating, of dreaming, of doing something from scratch. And the thing here with any way the wind blows is that your guides are trying to communicate to you that right now, what is coming towards you as a surprise is a crossroads and a new beginning. So you will have the option to try something completely new. I see that professionally, there is a way in which the wind will carry you, so to say. And before, you may have actually tried to interfere. You may have thought to yourself, no, I have a very specific outlook on what I want to do professionally, on how much I want to earn, on where I want to work. But I see here, in any way the wind blows in the number one, that actually you're meant to do something greater. Actually, you're meant to do something in which you just allow for the universe, for spirit, for your guides, for God to move you into a direction that is unexpected and better than what you had in mind for yourself. Just because something is unexpected doesn't mean that it's worse, group number one. Another thing before I move further into the reading that I actually want to look into is can you see this symbol here that we've got of this and I want to figure out precisely what this means. We've got our book of symbols because there is symbolism behind it. And I want us to really get into detail here. I want us to figure out precisely what your guides are trying to say to you because often the best intricacies are hidden in these little symbols. So let's see where we can find this. So C O um coffin cobra cockroach or is this like a hen no it's a rooster it's a rooster that's probably what it's called in this book are you am i even allowed to say cook? oh goodness i just said it again too oh well um let's go hen rooster 328 oh here we go go all right group number one this is going to be fun so one thing here with the hen and rooster is that hens and roosters have lived in domestic partnership with us for 4,000 years or more. Until recently, the domesticated birds lived much as their wild ancestors had, in small flocks with a distinct power hierarchy or pecking order, and with a dominant rooster, the cock of the walk, prevailing over the hens and the immature males. I feel like I am allowed to say this word, but I'm not. I'm not sure, 100%. So exalted in some ways, chickens have also been degraded in the symbolism of cockfighting, embedded in fantasies of bloodlust and machismo, and in the images of hens as ignorant, foolish, cowardly, timid, nagging, overprotective, and prone to mass panic. Such misconceptions are often leveled at women in general. Perhaps it is that chickens live so close to us that they are easy and available objects both for our spiritual imaginings and our domestic projections. Wow, that is so powerful. And with the hen slash rooster being shown here within the number one and it just being a symbol of a little bit of naivete, a little bit of foolishness, the number one also in the tarot is usually correspondent to the magician, which can be a little in over their head, a little overly confident in their new beginning. But I see that that's precisely the energy that you need, okay? This kind of cocky energy of being a little overly confident because otherwise you will block your blessings. You will block moving forward in the way that you should. So don't let fear 
take the best of you and get in your way, group number one. Next up, we've got the butterfly effect. So what you are meant to know right after empowering you to try something new, professionally speaking especially, and to not be afraid to allow for your guides and life to take you in a new direction is to know in the butterfly effect, you will really grow from this. You will really emerge as a different person, just as the butterfly is completely different from the caterpillar. And we've also got the number 19, which I believe is a prime number. It shows us here that this is a very special moment in time. You receiving this reading right now, you watching this video, group number one, it is very meaningful for the next unexpected surprises coming to you because it shows us here that you are meant to receive in this very moment that your changes are actually upgrades. Your changes are actually you leveling up and you will see butterflies moving forward everywhere. We've got a butterfly here here on the head of this person depicted in the butterfly effect. We've also got butterfly wings here. And of course, group number one, we will also look into the butterfly within our book of symbols. So I'll just lay this card here for us to uncover as soon as we're done with our book of symbols. But I do want to see what we've got in the butterfly because why not group number one? So let's see where we've got B, 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 B. Oh, butterfly slash moth. Let me just make sure our little, <laughs> our little foliage is in place, group number one, because who doesn't like a little bit of foliage here within these tarot readings? I know I do. So the butterfly and moth symbol. Kneeling before one another, a young man and woman kiss as a magically large butterfly hovers over and above the blossoming flowers, a reminder of erotic release and the imbibing of the sweet nectar of first love. From ancient times, the butterfly psyche has signified not only the mystery of physical metamorphosis, but also the loveliest transmutations of the soul, group number one. There are more than a thousand known species of butterflies and moths, insects that have two sets of scaly, often vividly colored wings, slender bodies, and sensitive antennae. Moths are millions of years older than butterflies, more so subdued in coloring, and mostly nocturnal, navigating by moon or stars. Butterflies are diurnal creatures navigating by the sun. The butterfly is one of our most poetic images of Psyche's self-renewal beyond even traumatic endings. And Australian Aborigines imagine butterflies as returning souls that enters the afterlife in the form of earthbound caterpillars. To the Aztecs, butterflies represented the heroic souls of sacrificed enemy warriors or of women who died in childbirth. Emblematic of their doomed suffering was the goddess Itzpapalotl, a star deity depicted as a butterfly surrounded by stone knives and associated with the eclipse of the sun. Wow, the shadow of butterflies and moths is in their fluttering movement, which has suggested not only the flickering of fire, or the twinkling stars, but eroticism, anxiety, or inconsistency of desire. The Latin American word mariposa means butterfly and prostitute. The mass twilight fluttering of moths is darkly associated with the energies of compulsive devouring. Wow, group number one. And in case you didn't know, actually the name Vanessa, my name, also means butterfly so we have a very like dark mystical devouring of the old you and transformation into the new through all of the symbolism of the butterfly and uncovering your next card we've got the number six unlock your mind it is time for you to do just that we've got a lot of these key symbols which of course represent a lock that can be unlocked it represents kind of like a means to an end, right? The ability to open up something that otherwise would remain closed, hidden, and in a way a secret or a mystery. Sorry, group number one, just making sure we're looking cute. And here within Unlock Your Mind, 
we've also got these peacock feathers and these show being open being proud being loud being yourself not being afraid to be different and to be noticed even though what you show on the outside is by far not everything about you because as already mentioned here we need a key to open this lock to you to your heart group number one basically so i do see that what comes as a huge upcoming surprise for you is the opening the unlocking of the next transformation in your life you are going to look in the mirror a couple months from now group number one and you won't be the same things will be very different i want to see how many months it's going to take Okay, Spirit says four months. Four months from the time of you watching this video, group number one. I kid you not, write down the date in your calendar right now on your phone, make a note, tell Siri to do it, tell Alexa to do it, write it into your journal today, four months from now. Write down transformation, write down checking in on my personal transformation. And I promise you, your guides are never wrong. Four months from now, you're going to think back at this video and be like, Vanessa was right. Everything about me has completely changed. I can't recognize the old me and my transformation has been huge. But anyways, you guys, group number one, I don't want to get stuck too soon in getting into too many nitty gritty little details of just a few cards. I hope you're enjoying this reading and I hope that you enjoy that we're getting into a lot of intricacies. We're not playing around anymore, all right, you guys? We are figuring out every piece of information that you are meant to receive. So next up, we've got the world. Group number one, congratulations. You know why? Because the world card is basically the most favorable card of the tarot. By the way, this is the Squid Cake Tarot deck for any of you guys asking, and none of these are sponsored. I just want you guys to know what I'm using so you can add them to your collection too. So here within the world, this is a card of having more than enough. And I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking this right now, group number one. When is this time finally coming? You've waited long enough. You've been patient. But I just want you to know here that this feeling of abundance and more than enough is not one that you need to wait for. You can create it right now. But I do see that creating it right now, that is definitely something that is a little difficult for you because you are someone who is still learning to create experiences through thought alone. You are still in the learning phase of meditating yourself into a new state of being. And that's fine, group number one. I think we all are kind of like going through our own journey and I don't want you to be hard on yourself because of that. But instead, I want to remind you that living in a state of abundance can be activated by not going back into your thoughts of overthinking and your thoughts of lack but instead creating a new response one thing that i just did earlier today group number one is when something really challenging happened for me rather than my old response which is fight or flight mode which is allowing my body to just fill up with a lot of emotion of anxiety i already know the outcome of doing that i already know the outcome of allowing something that is going left to just knock me out of balance and homeostasis and just put me into a fight or flight mode then i'll be tired the whole day i won't get anything done i'll be down i won't want to see anyone i won't want to do anything i know that version i've done it but i'm creating a new version in the unknown by reacting differently so what i wrote down is how i would usually react and then i wrote down my new reaction my new way of dealing with the situation of creating the world for myself and not allowing for any kind of like honestly let me just say it's stupid little small-minded people and individuals and people who just want to like take as much as they can no matter how it harms you i won't allow that to harm me actually here in the hanged man 
and we can just continue the story and draw your message from it, group number one. I chose to see it from the perspective of I'm just doing charity work. If someone wants to rip me off, if an accountant wants to like overcharge me for something they didn't even do and like just do half ass work and then not even finish it, I choose to see it from the perspective of I did charity work. This older gentleman clearly is not happy with himself and it's okay. You know, if he needed that in order to feel better about himself or in order to deal with his challenges, then I will gladly give him that and know that my life is so abundant that I don't need to worry about these little things. I don't need to sweat the small stuff. And it will happen to anyone in different circumstances, whether you have your own business or you're working for a company and you're dealing with people who constantly kind of want to elbow you out of the way. They always want to get their cake and eat it too. We will all experience these types of individuals and within the Ace of Swords, which again, the Ace stands for a new beginning. It's just about rephrasing these stories into something that suits us, into something that actually you can see it from that perspective. You can see it from the hanged man perspective of like, these things are happening to teach you a lesson, to teach you what red flags to look out for, to teach you that, you know what, if you don't know where you stand with a guy, if you don't know what's happening next in a romantic relationship and you're confused, that's usually a sign that they don't like you that much or that it's not going to be a relationship but instead a situationship. Some of us need to learn that the hard way. Of course, it's not always the case. I'm just making an example that happens pretty frequently or that I deal with very frequently with my like private clients. But I just want you to know here within the hanged man and the ace of swords that just coming to this understanding and realization that, hey, you can also see things from the perspective of it giving you clarity of anything that isn't aligned and isn't meant for you, taking itself out of your life. And that is the true blessing, to not have people hanging around you for longer than necessary that don't belong into this fulfillment story because the thing with the world card is that there's no space for people who are not on a very high vibrational wavelength. There's no space for naysayers, for negative Nancys. I want you to know here in the starfish spirit, there is literally only space for people who are open to infinite possibility because think of it this way. Of course, if someone cheats on you, for example, there is the possibility that you break up and that you're just heartbroken. But there's also another possibility. The other possibility could be that you realize your worth and that this is beneath your worth and you raise your standards and you find someone who respects you way too much to ever do that to you and the relationship with you. There's also the possibility of finding out that maybe the intimate life that you had was insufficient and you work things through with this person. We're not here to judge, we're just here to remember that Sometimes we think very closed off, we think very closed minded, we think there's only one possibility. Like if you're going through financial difficulty, the only possibility is barely survive, is just scrape by, is not get the lattes that you love. Okay, that's one possibility, scrape by till you're able to get yourself out of it. But the other possibility is also make more. The other possibility is also create another stream of revenue that can just blow this out of the park and make any kind of prior financial difficulty look like child's play. Be open to infinite possibility because even right now, if you're thinking of something challenging that you're dealing with, group number one, and you're like, why is this happening to me? And you feel like there's only one possibility and the possibility is not that great. It's not because only one possibility exists. It's most likely that you're just not open to seeing the other possibilities that actually are in the quantum field. They exist, but you've got to think of them. You've got to see them. You've got to access them. You have got to start feeling into those emotions of those other better possibilities that you would actually want. And next up, we've got the koi fish spirit. 
And that's the thing I love about these cards and also the fact that I have been doing this for so many years. The cards are so deeply connected. The koi fish spirit brings the message that there is always enough. This is the precise reminder you need right now. And it just shows you spirit, our guides are always here. And trust me, I was the biggest skeptic of tarot and oracle decks before I started using them myself. Believe it or not, I even like purchased my first decks just out of skepticism. Cause I was like, what is this? Worst case scenario, I just own a couple beautiful decks that I didn't really understand or get anything from. But best case scenario, see the infinite possibility. I start a YouTube channel and all of a sudden Google flies me out to LA one day to do a world tarot project with me. I publish multiple tarot and oracle decks. I do what I love and help people every single day. You see how the universe works? Do you see how magical life can really be? Do you see how being open to infinite possibility can create something that you never expected? And the thing in the koi fish spirit is that there is always enough. I always thought, well, are there even enough people who want to watch this? Are there even enough people who would want to get one of my tarot decks? Are there even enough people interested in symbolism and tarot decks and everything like that? And the thing about the koi fish spirit is that you are being reminded that the world is so abundant. Life is so abundant. Humanity is so abundant. There is more than enough money to go around. There is more than enough food, more than enough beautiful cars, beautiful people, business opportunities and ideas. There's more than enough love for everybody. So whatever it is that you wish to have in your life, whatever your dreams are, just know there is always enough. There's a reason why this symbol, why the koi fish spirit was popped right into your reading at this point, group number one. Another thing about the koi is that it is a symbol of abundance. And here we go again with our book of symbols. I just wanna see if the koi actually has a honorary mention in here or if it would just be a fish because koi are, especially in the East, I mean, they sell for crazy amounts of money depending on how old that they are and just imagine the status symbol of a koi something that can pair so easily um and people are really people don't play about koi all right so there's nothing here with koi there's just kobayashi corn no koi but i'm sure there will be fish i'm 100 percent sure of that so let's see here fingers fire fish 202 to 203 now let's see what our book of some oh this is very interesting too the coyote and then we've got the crab for all of my fellow cancerians the octopus and here we go the fish so here ooh, the swiss artist paul clay for all of you who don't know i am half swiss and i live in switzerland so the swiss artist paul clay who guarded his own inner life felt a protective kinship with his luminous goldfish, seemingly startled by our intrusion into its hidden seeped. Clay's fish stares, as us, stares at us warily, as if we coveted its gold embroidered scales while its timid companions dart away to hide among the aquatic weeds. Actually, a fisherman himself at one time, Clay abandoned his fishing rod after interior misgivings guided him to give up his predations and instead to wait patiently at the shore of consciousness for fish-like revelations. Wow, all right. As the world's earliest vertebrate, fish appeared in the ocean half a billion years ago when landlocked within evaporating seas, they survived by evolving into four-legged amphibians and reptiles, the ancestors of our own warm-blooded species. Fish easily symbolize our lost participation in their archaic unconscious world, one that fairy tales often portray as a lost golden ring that a fish returns as a gift in its mouth or inside its stomach. The fish's primal innocence suggested to Christians that it had been spared during the Great Flood. They portrayed those awaiting baptism as fish swimming around Christ's ankles. An astrological depiction of two fish swimming in opposite directions in its constellation of stars 
Pisces is traditionally ascribed to the past 2,000 year age in which one fish swims vertically towards the spirit and the other horizontally toward the matter. These two fish ably characterize our present split between the unconscious and the conscious psyche, a split equally serious whether one sees it as spirit lacking embodiment or matter lacking spirituality. Alchemy reflected a promising development within our age to reunite these divergent fish, and like clay, pointed to the image of the fish eye, a symbol of a still unrealized archetype of the self that comprehends spirituality and matter in a single mercurial in nature. Wow, group number one, fish have a very, very interesting symbolism, don't they? So group one, we are far from at the end of your reading. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to clear and cleanse the space, and then I'll be right back to guide you even more deeply into your prediction. So just hold on tight. You don't need to do anything. Just continue to lean back and relax, enjoy your reading, and I'll be right back with you. All right, you guys, let's carry on with our reading. I want to use this Love is Always the Way deck. And I just want to give a shout out to Shannon who sent me her deck. This is her deck and she wrote me such a sweet letter, you guys. I love when I receive decks and like little gifts from you guys. It is the cutest. Greetings from California. I'm a longtime fan and having watched your card reading videos, I learned from them and been inspired to create my own deck. I wanted to send you a complimentary deck in hopes that you'll use it and enjoy it. Well, here we are. If you use it in any of your videos, let me know and I will cross pollinate and post. I'm just a little guy, but mighty and passionate. I love this. Shannon, thank you for telling me to have fun with this deck and I can't wait to integrate it into our reading. So let's see what else group number one, what unexpected surprises are coming towards you using our new deck that we got from Shannon. So first up, open your heart, chakra to love. Wow. What is coming next for you is a huge opening. So group number one, if you identify as someone who is kind of shy when it comes to sharing their heart, and this doesn't mean you're a shy person overall. I mean, shy in a deep sense. Anyone who really knows who you are has to be a close friend. They have to be vetted. They have to be worth it. You may give people the feeling like they know you, but only very few actually know you opening your heart and letting them in. And I see that this is definitely like a protection mechanism. It's like a defense mechanism. You have been scorned, hurt, burnt before. And obviously like you don't want things to throw you off anymore. Yes, you're okay and in balance, even with just standing with one foot, literally, but you're not going to like give people extra ammunition to throw you off when you're already in a bit of like a balancing act. However, I do see that you have strengthened and solidified yourself from the inside out so much more that you are opening your heart to love. Love is the revolution. Look at this. I love it. So here within the revolution, I just want you to understand that the more that you see things from love, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the more you will feel so reformed and like nothing can hurt you. Like I was telling you guys my little story earlier about someone doing me wrong, for example, like just so clearly, so transparently. It's like, I always feel bad for this person. The thing is like, I just choose to see even wrongdoings from a place of love, like seeing it as charity work, seeing it as, you know, I understand this is how you choose to react and to be, but you may have expected that I would be mad, that I would react in a way that is stepping out of love like you've reacted. But actually, I just want to show you that it's not necessary to be like that. It's not necessary to ever step outside of love. It's not necessary to ever step into hate or ever step into meanness, rudeness. As long as you're strong, really, you will never feel the need to do that. Hate and rudeness is for the unloved and honestly, the wounded and in some cases, even the weak. Love from afar. Yes, group number one. So you can love someone from afar 
when they've done you wrong. It doesn't mean that you let them come back and do the same thing to you. So on this channel, we are not Delulu to, you know, loving someone who literally like hurt you so badly and so consciously. No, no, no. We love them from afar, group number one. And why we love them is to be who we truly are because we are lovers, not fighters, group number one. That's something that I feel in solidarity with you. And we will never align with fighters and there's no reason to. And what comes is a huge surprise, all right, is that there will be this huge epiphany this huge change in direction once you do this and i see here within diana that the thing is like the more you remove yourself from overthinking what someone feels towards you the more you remove yourself from overthinking anything that has happened to you that is traumatic of course there will be moments where you have to process but i'm just saying the ruminating right that's what really zaps your energy and when you remove yourself from that and you focus your intention on the goal you focus your intention back on where you you're going you get back into driver's seat boy are you going to get into that race car into that luxury vehicle and drive off at a hundred miles per hour right past all of those things that annoyed you all of those people who harmed or hurt you and you're not even gonna do it in this cocky way actually you're just going to gently let the corners of your mouth curl upward and just do it with so much grace and love because it doesn't concern you anymore you have left the spot where you were once spending time with them. It's the same like outgrowing friends from middle school and high school, people saying that you've changed, you know, old friends just not being in alignment with you anymore. The thing is that you have completely grown in where you're going with your life and you're just not that person who wants to gossip about others, who wants to live in self-limiting beliefs, who wants to hold yourself or anyone around you back, or who wants to be in the known reality of those people anymore. You have grown past that and you want to continue to grow past that. And here within El Moria, what I can see here is that you are wearing kind of like this cloak of protection and the thing is like when you feel so divinely protected you don't have to defend yourself you don't have to fight back you will allow for karma to do everything that needs to be done for you but of course you also have a very deep-seated belief that you will be fine so group number one if right now you're thinking to yourself you know what i'm gonna be fine either way i may be going through a tough time now but i'm a fighter and after all life isn't easy going through tough times and life also isn't easy when you give up like things don't all of a sudden become easy when you give up in a tough situation and i just want you to know here in el moria that you're awakening to the presence that you're always divinely guided and protected the universe is with you and you don't have to prove anything to anyone all right all you need to do is to express and kind of just be okay with love and acceptance love is yours that's what we've got here within hope recognize your divine worth choose loving thoughts and no less group number one you don't deserve anything less it is important for you to always choose loving thoughts towards yourself and i used to think that i used to always choose loving thoughts and then i really deeply analyzed it in every area of my life so in romantic love how i speak to myself how i speak to my body how i speak to my business my professional life how i speak to my money how i speak to my home and my clothing style i know there's so many different areas that you all of a sudden start to realize i'm actually not always choosing loving thoughts in these areas of my life and i can really improve that and maybe that will change something because i've never tried it before and that's what i just want to make so clear to you group number one that's a message i'm getting it's in the i haven't done it before that's where the magic lies the magic for you lies in the unknown it lies in the i've never been there before and I'm curious to see where this may lead, or even I'm a little scared of where this may lead. I have a little bit of anxiety of where this may go. That is also so valid for you for 
the unknown for the newness that you're trying out strength group number one i love how these cards just speak for themselves this is my gentle heart tarot deck which i feel always just has the gentlest but yet most on point messages ever so the strength card is a card of not needing to use any brute force or any violence in a situation in order to make it turn out in your favor but instead just having this inner calm this inner peace this inner knowing of who you are and where you're going that when you enter a room you announce yourself even if that room is filled with naysayers enemies bullies you don't need to stoop to their level nor do you need to get ready for a confrontation you simply enter and your energy is enough to show that you're not playing that you're not that person anymore that they once knew. The Ace of Crystals shows me here, group number one, that what comes as a huge surprise to you as well is the reactions you get from the external world when you enter a room and when you meet people that you used to know that may have been low-key shady to you quite a few times or even kind of like made backhanded comments gave you compliments that weren't real made you feel inferior just because they could and now that the tables have turned and all of a sudden they're not so cool anymore or they're not so popular and you have just glowed up in your later time in life because you were just never meant to be that person who was like a very early bloomer and then kind of had their biggest time of success as a teen no you are meant to live that through your adult life so now when they see you there's this air of intimidation and you don't even need to say anything it's just really clear who quote unquote won in this situation and who's like the loser so to say group number one as mean as it sounds all right group number one so i do want to add some letters into your reading intuitively just for spirit to be able to spell things out for us so we've got, ooh, we've got some interesting letters here. We've got T, I've seen an N, I've seen C, U, E. Okay, so one thing that I'm getting here is tech, tech new. What comes as a surprise is new technology coming into your life that will kind of light things up and even give you a new means of communication with a loved one and also with loving someone from afar okay because as we already mentioned group number one you don't need to love someone from close up that is too dangerous to love from close up all right we don't need anyone who's like dangerous for the heart anywhere close to us got here also learning new softwares for your job learning new softwares for your professional life i'm sorry that things keep getting kind of overlit within your reading and i always find that very symbolic of spirit being present during your reading and of just overall being divinely guided group number one so i want to move a little more deeply into your reading i will again clear and cleanse the space and i'll be right back with you relax group number one this is your time and your reading that i can't wait for us to get even more deeply into all right group number one so let's move further into your reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you so first up we've got the ten of cups as well as the eight of wands so here within the ten of cups first and foremost this is a card of feeling happy with your relationships this is also like the family card so what will come as a next unexpected surprise is a lot of togetherness and also bridges coming back to get so broken bridges basically being rebuilt refurbished and repaired that you thought may never get to this point and i see here within the eight of wands that you will get a message from someone whom you were once really close to that you fell out with they will message you shortly after you've received this reading group number one and their goal is togetherness their goal is actually to come towards you with love group number one and this is maybe something you absolutely did not expect you didn't see coming because you thought that that relationship was just so done the eight of wands is a card of quick action so this was like a split second decision that this person made in regards to trying to get you back into their life and i just want you to know that this brings good news this is a good reappearance in your life 
someone who is coming wanting to patch things up and even admitting their wrongs to you and i want to see when this person is going to enter so we've got the king of swords and this is very indicative of who they are so swords that's air sign all right libra aquarius gemini and the king of swords that shows us that this is someone who usually has the upper hand this is someone who even has like a lot of ego and pride and it's almost hard for them to like come back and admit that they were wrong because they don't usually ever do that even if they are because just socially they don't have to people never really hold them accountable but they have realized with you <laughs> group number one that it just doesn't work that way. It's just not good what they've done or how they've left the situation. So they're trying to come back. They are a very ambitious person. They are someone who always wants to kind of make things better or make things up if they ruined them at one point. And I will add a charm for this person, intuitively pick that too. Okay, we didn't draw anything. We just drew our string. Okay, so we've got the ship's wheel here they want to get back in the driver's seat and they want to actually like steer this in a favorable direction they want to show you that they're not afraid to admit that they're wrong we'll do one more little symbol oh we've got the symbol of the key remember we had that earlier in your reading group number one please don't be surprised if you see key symbols around you and even wearing a piece of jewelry with this key symbol that looks extremely similar okay gold we've got this key symbol that almost has like a little heart shape at the top or a shape of like an eight laying on its side either way i just want you to know here that this is going to enter your life soon this will come as a surprise really soon the symbol of the key the key in the form of jewelry and then shortly thereafter even with the king of swords so them gifting you this moving into your life in a sense of being humble and allowing you to decide whether you want them or not and here in the four of cups i can see that you will really need to think about it because group number one the thing is as already mentioned you're not who you used to be maybe in the past you would have tolerated bad behavior or even disrespect and kind of like been okay with someone coming back or as i like to say someone weaseling their way back in but now you really got to think about it because the thing with you is like you'd rather be alone than be with someone who is fake or might hurt you again and you just feel like doesn't truly appreciate you so here in the four of cups you're like um i don't know about you sir i don't know about you in this king of swords situation and like i need a security deposit this time before you come back into my life because if any damage is done i need to be able to fix it and that should definitely not have me being out of pocket so king of swords pay up that's the vibe i'm getting here from you group number one and rightfully so you know like the saying of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, you're not taking that lightly. And I understand it, group number one, because you're just tired of giving chances or making excuses for the wrong people. So let's open this door for you, right? We had the key. Now we will unlock this door and see where it leads. Remember, here we go, group number one. You see your little key? Let's unlock let's see what we've got here deeper all right you are not finished you are not yet done dig deeper and deeper the best is to come hold on hold on <laughs> pass this card on i love this so this shows you that what comes as a huge surprise is that all of the best is yet to come for you group number one you've only scratched the surface on life you've only scratched the surface on the best of your existence and there is still so much you've got to hold on though okay don't make any premature decisions don't quit anything on a whim or just because you had like an urge an impulse to do it know that digging deeper often means going to where you thought the end of your willpower was and then still finding more willpower to go beyond that it's like 
getting to know a whole new you you didn't even know existed. Now, group number one, I don't want to make this reading too crazy long. So what I'll do here is I will end the reading for YouTube and I will extend this reading onto my patron for my smaller audience, which makes this a more precise, very uncensored space where nothing is off limits and I can really delve even more deeply into your group number one. So if you're thinking of receiving more of these messages and you're thinking of joining the patron, just remember, if you already like my videos here on YouTube, you will love that space and you will love to receive even more deeper, more personalized readings for a smaller audience where you know that it's just going to be so intricate. And one thing that I want you to know here at the end of this part for group number one is that I appreciate you so much, group number one. I'm so happy that we get to bond, that you're here, whether we're just bonding through YouTube or you're part of the patron or this is the first time that you found my channel. I'm just so grateful for it all and I want you to know I will always be creating absolutely free readings on YouTube for everyone to access. That is the goal to provide you guys with support and value and to always be your big sis who's here for you. So group number one, I hope that you enjoyed your reading. Let me know below in the comments section. For all of my mega real ones, leave a tree emoji below in the comments section because the only way you would know to leave a tree emoji below is if you watch the entirety of group one and you made it all the way to this portion. So make sure you leave that tree emoji down below for me to know and for me to heart and like. And group number one, I'm sending you so much love and I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming readings. Hello, group number two, and welcome to your reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. Are you ready to uncover all of this information? Because I sure am, and I'm super prepared to channel these messages for you. So here we have our bag of letters, we've got our divination board, and of course the deck and crystal of your choice. Now you chose the orange calcite crystal, which group number two is actually a crystal that helps you to feel calm confident in yourself again and helps you to remember who TF you are. So if you feel like it's been forgotten or in a way certain people have made you forget that, oh no, 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 group number two. We are back to remembering all of the ways in which we are worthy, lovable, and everything that you've already accomplished in your life that you get to give yourself a pat on the shoulder for. Don't be afraid to praise yourself. That's the instant message we're receiving here. Six of Pentacles shows us that you are such a generous person, group number two, and the world really needs more individuals like yourself who are generous with their time, their energy, their limited resources, and even with money. Group number two, if you've ever given someone actual physical cash or like an item that wasn't cheap, an item that is worth a good chunk of change, trustingly, lovingly, that just shows that you are the type of individual that is selfless, that cares, that always tries to do things for others. And as an unexpected surprise, what is coming towards you is not just recognition for that, but also actually someone coming back to your life sooner rather than later, giving you a gift, giving you money back that you thought was gone forever. That is one thing that I can see that is coming towards you, receiving some sort of refund, some sort of cash back that you didn't expect. And the High Priestess shows us here that this will restore some of the fate that you had lost in humanity. Understandably so, group number two. There are unfortunately a lot of incidents, a lot of people, a lot of events that can make us feel as though humanity is just at an all-time low, right? But the High Priestess shows us that in actuality, you are a very reflective person. You have a lot of feminine energy. And what that means is that when something happens, you take it to heart and you take it personally, even if it's not your fight to go to war in. All right, even if it affects someone outside of your race, outside of your species, outside of your country, away from the continent you even live in, you take things personally and you always want to do what's best for humanity. You want to stand up for those who cannot stand up for themselves. 
and I intuitively chose some letters for you. So we've got O, G, G, as well as S. Let's see what the universe wants to say here. Let's add some more letters, shall we? All right, so we've got another S, we've got an E, and another E. Okay, so we've got double E, double G, double S, and an O. This is a very interesting combo, group number two. So one thing about these showing up double, so coincidentally, or at least it seems like a coincidence, I just want you to know that these are very important letters moving forward and choosing the people to surround yourself with. Watch out for double Gs, double Es, double Ss in names, as well as Os. These are your people. All right, these are the people that you want to be closer with. These are the people that will keep you grounded and centered, and they will surprise you positively. So group number two, let's move a little. Oh, I wanted to say let's move further into your reading, but spirit already knows what needs to happen. We've got the quill. Now, the quill is a representation of getting back to the basics. And what this means is that you've been overthinking, group number two. And while you're overthinking, you are overcomplicating your life. You're putting your awareness kind of in a space of confusion of being all over the place. Rather than putting your intention as well as your energy into one certain thing, you're multitasking and you're tiring yourself out really quickly. And the, wow, <laughs> did you see that group number two? Please rewind if you didn't see that because you just, you can't make this up. I am so divinely connected after so many years of reading the cards. It, it astonishes me at how deep the connection is at this point. So in the heart, love deep affection and caring it literally jumped out of the pile it popped out group number two we need this message right now getting back to the basics of the heart of love deep affection and caring if there is a relationship in your life right now that you feel like you're over analyzing you're over analyzing what you're going to text how you're going to text when you're going to write it you're over analyzing their text messages the time in which they sent it to you the wording the emojis Group number two, get back to the basics. Get back to simply just being and reminding yourself if something is meant to be, it will be. If for whatever reason it is not, then that's fine, okay? Because we are not desperate. We are not begging. Aside from that in the heart, I just want us to enter our book of symbols, group number two, and just deepen our understanding of what the heart means in a symbolic way. So let's see what page the heart is on. Yes, we have got the heart group number two. I absolutely love learning more about symbolism with you guys because one thing that I want you to take from the channel always is more knowledge and more depth. So here we've got a little quote, stop the flow of your words, open the window of your heart and let the spirit speak by Rumi. The wounded yet radiant heart encircled by a wreath of thorns Sprouting grape wines, wheat, and across from its severed aorta and bleeding into a chalice like font conveys the transformation of Christ's love and sacrifice into the elements of the Eucharist. So can the deepest pain, when fully held and suffered in the heart's vessel, be gradually distilled into the redemptive. Very interesting to see the symbolism and what it means, right, in a historical way. So the heart is a living symbol. When we say, I love you with all my heart, we do and do not mean the heart as organ, whose beats cause the circulation of blood throughout the body, whose failure could drain the body of life. As the soulful, as the heart of the cosmos, echoed and amplified in the primal pulsation of the drum, Heartbeats correspond to the contracting and expanding of movements of the universe, while the heart in the body is as essential to life as the sun is to our solar system. Among the first sounds experienced in the womb are the internally resounding rhythms of the mother's heart, 
enveloping and echoing the quicker beats of the embryo as it grows. The heart's undeniable physical centrality to our existence has its correspondence in the undeniable reality of our emotions. Variable heartbeats measuring out our feelings of affection, desire and delight, as well as pounding out our rages, fears and vulnerabilities. The heart can be pierced and melted by the darts of Eros as well as broken by love's refusal. Isn't the heart just such such a romantic symbol i love it in ancient egypt the hieroglyphic heart shaped as a vase was the storehouse of memory and truth the center of personality of understanding will and thought as well as creative imagination so here we have an amulet meant to help in the underworld ordeal of the weighing of the heart so you know how in a lot of these like egyptian stories if you will in this egyptian lore mythology the heart allows to like weigh whether someone will go into like the heavens basically or the hells you know what i mean and this is made of carnelian this is from the 7th to 4th century bce in egypt and here we just have more depictions of the heart the heart is a very important and central symbol not just from today's day and age but this has gone back for centuries right here this is imagery this is a drawing of heart and blood vessels by leonardo da vinci it was made in approximately 1513 in italy so more than 500 years ago group number two let's move a little more deeply into your reading now that we've kind of spoken about the heart and a little bit of a historical and very interesting context now love is always the way of course we had to carry on with this deck which my beautiful subscriber sent to me along with this heartfelt letter and note i love it thank you so much shannon if you are watching this video i absolutely love this deck that you created and i can't believe i was part of the inspiration behind it i love when you guys send me things so in manifest love group number two i just want you to know that what comes as a huge unexpected surprise is you manifesting love very very soon manifesting a type of love that makes you feel so blessed so giving and such a deep sense of affection and caring and sometimes you manifest love in ways that you didn't expect i for example group number two have manifested so much love recently more than ever before and i was shook because i didn't know that this type of love exists so deeply and so intensely outside of romantic love and for me this has been platonic love this has been love with close friends that i have made where i have deepened and strengthened relationships where i have created a type of love i've never experienced before with their help with their support with their love and also deepening more love within my family within the ties of the people with whom i kind of share the same dna with really but i see here for you group number two spirit wants to say to you romantic love you are manifesting romantic love that you absolutely did not expect or see coming group number two and romantic love is something that comes once you're okay with manifesting any other type of love that is the next stage when you manifest true romantic love is when you've come to a place where you're not desperate before that you may manifest some types of feelings but they're not always love you know when feelings hurt when loving someone or thinking you're in love with someone is really painful group number two You've got to ask yourself if it really is love or whether it's just a chemical reaction a chemical interaction with a trauma bond that you have created around this person now let us get a charm out for you oh we've got an arrow <laughs> group number two everything is pointing towards the picture book romantic love look at the fact that the heart jumped out of the card pile as i was shuffling you guys saw that it was on camera i've got a 4k camera you guys this is no joke we saw it happen live then we've got manifesting love romantic love we've got the arrow which is 
the picture book representation of being in love, you know, the heart with the arrow. So I just want you to know here, group number two, I'll put your arrow on our divination board, that that is one thing you are right now drawing into your life and will come as a big surprise to you that you did not expect. And not expecting is usually the best surprise when it just kind of happens and you think that you are so wildly lucky and blessed to even be in this situation. All right, next up, we have got the Eight of Pentacles. So despite your personal life, your love life being very interesting, fulfilling, and having a lot of affection in it, the Eight of Pentacles shows me that what comes as a big surprise to you is how kind of devoted and how into working that you've become and how important it is for you to take the necessary steps to become the best at your field. You're not playing around anymore when it comes to work. You're not playing around anymore when it comes to your finances. You are buying books. You are entering courses, whatever works for you. You're not discriminating what it is. For some, it's delving into more spirituality and meditation. For others, it is reading kind of more dry finance books and it works for them. For even another person, it's going to seminars, to get togethers, to networking events. Here in the Eight of Pentacles, I see that you want to do that. And the thing is like, while you've got love in your life, you also in a way want to impress your lover. You want them to feel like you're a teammate. The lovers showing up definitely shows us that there is some sort of companionship some sort of team efforts that you are working towards that are happening that will come to your life as a surprise and that's also why you want to work hard and that is because not only do you want your person to know you're capable but it's almost like because the person that you are in this romantic love with is very successful themselves group number two it's like you want to show that you bring things to the table and you don't need them, but you want them. And I totally understand and get this group number two, and I don't want you to feel like what you're doing isn't right because it is understandable and it's great, you are fully capable, but make sure that it doesn't become too much of a competition and you don't get too much into your masculine of wanting to prove to your lover that you are a worthy teammate. You don't need to bring anything to the table other than yourself, group number two, and your presence. I don't want you to feel like you are defined by what you bring to the table professionally or in a monetary sense. And that is where I can see that you have sometimes had a struggle or a mix-up you have sometimes identified with things and accomplishments rather than just the beautiful being that you are and this is where i can see we can do some healing some detaching and some reinventing really of how you view yourself and what you view as your most valuable assets so i will now roll our astro dice to see what type of sign is of importance here Okay, so we've got an Aries placement that is very important. This is a fire replacement, group number two. This Aries placement makes a lot of sense because we've got romantic love, we've got the lovers, we've got the heart. This shows a lot of passion. So if you have had lackluster relationships in the past, group number two, it is going to change for you. Okay. And another thing here that we've got is also Leo energy. And with Leo energy, I want you to know here that Leo is ruled by the sun. Leo is very generous, very out there. So we've got two fire signs that showed up for you and these two fire signs show that it is time for you to finally focus on passion, enthusiasm, being spontaneous, just loving and reminding yourself there is literally no point in holding back throw yourself wholeheartedly into love because even if you bump your head, even if something happens that's unexpected, you will be so happy that you followed your intuition and you followed your want and need to actually be loving, to experience love, then holding back. And another thing about things just being really passionate, I'll just literally spell it out for you. Group number two, um, when it comes to what's going on behind closed doors, group number two, spirit definitely has a message here 
for you about being wild, about exploring, about having the best time. And what comes as a surprise too is that this is going to change a lot. You're going to like it a lot more than you ever have. And you're going to have a very transformative moment with love and intimacy. And you'll think to yourself, oh my goodness, I didn't even know. The lovers again. You didn't even know this was possible, group number two. There is crazy love coming towards you. The Liebenden, that's German for the lovers from another tarot deck, group number two. The divine and spirit is speaking so clearly about your love life, about love, harmony, being together with someone, your soulmate, your forever person. I do not like to get too deeply into like soul ties, soulmates, twin flames and so on unless it is abundantly clear that that is what the reading is about because i think people can overuse that and immediately say oh your soulmate is coming your forever person your husband your wife your spouse your partner for life but the thing here with you group number two is that spirit knows this and spirit is trying to make it undeniable and inexplicably clear that this is what is coming next as a surprise for you. This is what is coming into your life that you absolutely didn't expect. Such a great relationship, such a long lasting one, such an intimate, kind, caring, deep one, affectionate one, where you have the best behind closed doors time ever. So I want you to know that this psychic reading it's no joke for you, group number two. It is definitely showing us so many synchronicities, so many double letters. So many things showing up in multiple ways in high numbers that is making it completely clear that what comes as a next unexpected surprise to you is love in the best, most harmonious way possible. And then we've also got the page of swords and this shows us that it will be a whole new way of communicating. You've never felt like you can communicate so openly and directly and clearly like you will with this person here that is your romantic love. And also, if you are already in a relationship or even a marriage, I want you to know that this does not exclude you because marriages have different cycles. Relationships go through different phases in which you can reconnect, you can reignite the spark, you can make intimacy a lot better than it's ever been before. And you can also learn to leave the ego behind and communicate with passion, with grace, with kindness on a completely fresh slate. When you are really meant to be with someone, this is possible. And in some instances, you also then realize, hey, what I really want is a matter of the heart. What I really want is true romantic love. I want someone that I'm crazy about. I want a lover, a best friend, someone who is everything. And then you go back to the drawing board and you manifest someone into your life that you haven't experienced so far. And one thing that I just want to point out when it comes to manifestation, group number two, that is so important, and many of us forget, is to manifest someone not just that is the love of your life that you love. You should be manifesting someone who is obsessed with you, group number two, who loves you, who sees you as the love of their life. Because trust me, I have made this mistake before where I have manifested someone and something that I wanted, but I didn't manifest them kind of wanting me back, you know, manifesting someone who has certain attributes, but you want to make sure you're manifesting it in a way that it's showing you love and you care. So not just manifesting someone you love, making sure they love you back. They see you as the love of their life back and that they are someone that you want to be with, right? Not just manifesting love, but mutual love and respect, a mutual partnership. So if you've been struggling with manifesting love, that may be the area or the point of manifestation that you have been making like a slight error in or that has been delaying this forever love that we see here within your reading, the soulmate connection, this tie that is just undeniably special, deep, and that's coming towards you as a surprise sooner rather than later. So I do also want to add a month of the year into your reading group number two. Isn't this just such a fascinating 
beautiful, deep reading of love. We've got October as the officialization. So you will know for sure in October when the leaves are falling and are changing their colors in the Northern Hemisphere and some other areas of the planet as well. And I just want you to know here within October, this is the month of passion, of radiance, and of love really being solidified. Possibly also because when you start talking about holidays and you're making plans with another person for holidays, that's when you know they are the one. <laughs> that's when you know that this is a long-term thing. So October is the set in stone month and moment for you where you know this is not just an infatuation. This is not just something that I thought was love. This is love. Now, group number two, I will proceed to clear and cleanse the space and be back so we can move even more deeply into your reading. Leave a heart emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you are part of group two and you've made it to this point of your reading because that is the only way you would know to leave a heart emoji below. You don't have to do anything other than continue to lean back, relax, and enjoy receiving your reading group number two. And I'll be right back to delve more deeply into the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. Hello, group number two. So let's delve even further into the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you, shall we? So first up, we've got the Ace of Cups in reverse as well as the Two of Diamonds. So there is someone leaving your workplace that you didn't expect to walk out. I see here in the Two of Diamonds that there is someone that you're working with who you have depended on, you've worked with them, you have gone through some stressful periods together. This was not a strained relationship this was a rather good relationship a professional one and in the ace of cups reverse i can see that they're going they're leaving you didn't expect this it comes as a surprise to you but you also understand their reasoning you understand that they're being undervalued underpaid overworked and that they've got better opportunities elsewhere so you completely get why this person would leave a work environment that is toxic for them and actually here in the two of diamonds what it does is it makes you put on your own little entrepreneurial hat and ask yourself how you can for one create multiple streams of income and revenue so you're not just dependent on one salary or one paycheck and for two you are also evaluating whether the energetic exchange feels right that you're experiencing when it comes to work that you do whether you feel as though yeah you know i am actually being paid fairly or you feel as though mm, in a sense I feel as though I'm being undervalued because the energetic vibration and frequency that you bring to your work and that you have to deal with at your workplace is definitely so differentiating when it comes to the quality of work you put out. So if you feel undervalued, the quality of the work that you're putting out will absolutely not look the same. The creativity won't be there as when you do feel valued and you do feel as though you're being seen and heard and taken seriously let's just make sure our foliage is all nicely set up here group number two so let's see what else we've received i did intuitively shuffle and lay two extra cards for you that we will now uncover together are you ready group two because i know i am so let's see the ten of crystals oh you are overworked group number two you are in a place where burnout is something you have feared and you have thought to yourself, is it really worth it just to line another person's pockets to overwork myself to this extent? And I just want you to know that sometimes the answer lies with us to adjust our pricing, adjust our offerings and so on. This is something that I've also learned over and over again because yeah on one hand you want to be competitive and you want to make sure that you're not overpriced or priced way higher than everyone else but at the same time you also need to value yourself and what you bring to the table and remember that the right people will also value you they will value your energy they will see the passion and love that you put into things and the ten of crystals just shows us you've got so much on your shoulders that you're carrying it's hard to move forward like this it's hard to feel strong to behave in a manner that is also strong because 
What doesn't kill you doesn't just make you stronger. What doesn't kill you sometimes makes you weaker. And that is where what comes as a big surprise. You're having this epiphany, this breakthrough moment of, oh my God, there are some areas in which I have really overworked myself or I have really put in way, way more than I ever should have. For me, I would say, sure, I learned that with work and business and entrepreneurial ventures, but another area of life that I just want to communicate with you because you may resonate with this group number two is relationships. I mean, I'm not doing this anymore. Of course, we've realized it, we've learned it, we've changed our approach, our mindset and our internal wiring. However, I do want you to know that yes, in romantic relationships, I have also been in the Ten of Crystals position where I have stemmed the entire relationship, the entire emotional health of the relationship, the entire physical health of the relationship, the entirety of even making the relationship exist, of it even being able to come back from disagreements, arguments, from challenging situations. I stemmed everything. It was like I had a little child that I had to take care of, a very grown but mentally still very small child. And the Ten of Crystals just shows us here that it's important for you to find balance, okay? Rather than being in the Ten of Crystals, remind yourself in the Two of Diamonds, balance is important. Otherwise, as we've got here in the Ace of Cups, the reversed cup where things just flow out, you may have to let go of things. You may have to let go of relationships, of work opportunities, and just kind of know, okay, they can flow out of your cup, and it's not as though you won't fill up your cup with something better. That was a drink you didn't like anyways. That may have been someone's cup of tea, or it may have been your cup of tea at the time, but you don't drink that English breakfast tea anymore. You now drink white needle tea. You now drink matcha. Or like some people like to say, it wasn't my cup of tea, I drink champagne now. I don't drink any alcoholic beverages, so hence the matcha analogy, but you get what I'm trying to say, group number two. Next up, we've got the queen of diamonds. Now the queen of diamonds shows us here that you have got a lot of different wheat that is now ready for you to kind of not uproot but wheat that you're able to harvest that you're able to make bread with and the queen of diamonds shows us here that you have a very humble approach even in success and group number two what comes as a huge surprise actually is that you don't feel as respected as you actually are. You are far more respected than you even know. I see here in the Two of Diamonds that the way you see yourself, professionally speaking, and the way your work associates and people who you deal with professionally view you, these are two very different things. The Queen of Diamonds shows me that you do have a very masculine aura where they know that you don't mess around, but at the same time, there is this femininity and humility that allows for people to not feel too distant from you. And having this kind of mix in personality is really healthy and it's definitely also something that sets you apart from others. Let's see what else we're gonna receive here for you, shall we? I just want us to intuitively go through a door for you, group number two. And this is what we've got, this is the arched kind of gateway do not fear what travel brings my dear the moment is yours begin now here all right do not fear what travel is going to bring all right actual travel literal travel group number two if you are guilty of not traveling because you're a little scaredy cat you're a little bit worried you're overthinking you're feeling like oh my god maybe something's gonna happen am i ready to solo travel Group number two, you are ready. And it doesn't have to be crazy far. Group number two, you can do your research. You can make sure you go somewhere that is relatively safe and you can get out of this comfort zone that you've been in where you haven't traveled as much as you really wanted to because either you didn't have someone to go with or you felt unsure about going by yourself and adding some letters into your reading we've got i as well as you so you are meant to go somewhere with these letters within the place's name and then we've got a you again 
So you is very important when it comes to the name of the place that you will be visiting, your first travel destination. And then we've also got I in the sense of that is a you-centric place. All right, so funny, you and I, you-centric place. So this is a place that you want to go and no one else is as interested in. So you don't have friends or family who are obsessed with going there. But the thing is, you don't mind because you're realizing that sometimes you will have to do things by yourself. Sometimes you will have to get out of the known, step into the unknown in order to do the things that you've always dreamt of doing. Because the thing here is that you have stopped yourself from doing certain things, from traveling to certain places because you didn't have anyone to join. And that ends here, group number two. I see that what comes as a surprise here in the Königin der Kelche, which in German, it means the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups brings a lot of intuition and warmth as well as compassion. And what you are finding super surprising is actually, even though humanity never fails to disappoint you <laughs> in many different ways, you still feel a deep sense of compassion and love that is actually just ever growing. The thing is, you don't judge people, you genuinely don't. You can find some sort of compassion and feeling of understanding, even with someone who has committed like a heinous crime. You can somehow see their viewpoint and you can somehow also understand them. Whether you agree with what they did or not, that's a whole different story, group number two, but you can at least understand the human aspect. So next up, we have got the creator. So the creator is giving you a big fat no when it comes to <laughs> your queen of cups kind of mindset. And you may need this right now because you have been too compassionate, group number two. I'm sorry to call you out in this way, but you know, we had the 10 of crystals, we had the ace of cups reverse, like someone else is showing you how it's done. We spoke about the work colleague that's leaving. They're showing you how it's done when you're overworked, when you're not appreciated, and when you're not treated fairly, they've left. And now you're getting a big fat no from your creator, from your maker telling you, you deserve better. You don't deserve to be in a place where you feel overworked for months or even years on end. Some people do that for a lifetime at the end of the day, but you are not meant to be one of those people, group number two. And it is not to say that the people who do end up in that situation aren't smart or don't care about themselves. It's just they failed to put themselves first sooner. And we don't want you to be part of that. Next up within the hanged woman or hanged man, however you'd like to see it, in this deck it is a hang hanged woman. In German, it says der Gehenkte, and this is about seeing things from a different perspective. Now, if, for example, your little sister, your niece, your mother, your best friend would be in the situation that you are in with feeling overworked, feeling underappreciated, how would you view it? Wouldn't you have a little bit of anger towards the person that is overworking them? And I'm not encouraging you to channel anger or any kind of emotions that are violent into your body, group number two, but it's just seeing things from the perspective of why do you allow yourself to be okay with a less good or less appreciative treatment? Why do you allow yourself to be put through the ringer so much more? than someone that you love? Why do you feel like you deserve that, but you wouldn't have someone else need to experience that? I see here within the Eight of Swords that the thing here is that we've got to break through a barrier and a constraint that you can see is present. So you have right now this trapped energy within you that is not quite in a place of self-love, that is not quite in a place of truly feeling deserving, of truly feeling like you deserve better. And this is something I don't want you to feel embarrassed about looking into. And I also don't want you to say to yourself immediately, like, no, I love myself. I'm good. Because I used to do that group number two until I realized like this is a complex topic. This is not just a, well, generally I love myself, so it's good. 
The thing is, there are so many different compartmentalized parts of loving yourself in this human existence. I just want to remind you, you may love yourself, for example, when it comes to accepting and loving your body, but you may not love yourself when it comes to romantic relationships because you have allowed or are currently allowing somebody to mistreat you in a romantic relationship and you think it's okay or you make excuses for them or you tell yourself it will get better and you stay in a situation you are not meant to be in. That is not self-love. The same goes for work. You may think to yourself, no, I love my work and I love myself and I want to be successful. But if you are overworked here, if you are on your last leg before burnout, how is that loving yourself? Group number two, please let me know because yes, I am your big sis who is going to call you out and say to you, look, there's a reason why you're here receiving this reading and why I need to tell you this so directly. And it is also to understand that loving yourself has so many different facets, has so many different shapes and forms and areas of life. You most likely still have one or two areas you have to work on, even if you think that you already love yourself. Now, the lobster shows us here that what comes as an unexpected surprise is that when you begin to do that, you will be tested in the form of a financial pinch. So leaving a job, for example, or spending a good amount of money and investing in another stream of revenue will leave you feeling like, oh my goodness, I spent so much money on this. I feel out of pocket. I hope I get the money back. But the thing about really having faith is that even when everything looks like it's not going to turn out as expected, you still carry on, you still believe in it, and you still hold that belief in high regard and you don't all of a sudden start to doubt and start to backtrack and i can see here within lightning that your guides are trying to tell you to control your anger or you will be sorry so your guides are trying to have a very stern and real conversation with you if right now this part of the reading is making you feel like, no, I do love myself. Why is Vanessa saying this? Why are these messages being channeled? And a lot of you have actually DM'd me and told me that one time you received a reading and you didn't like what it said, like specifically a comment I remember is from a young woman who was telling me how in my reading, I said that her romantic partner was not the one. She got a private reading from me. And then she stopped watching me because she didn't like the answer that she got. And then all of a sudden things kind of crumbled and things went left. And then she came back to the channel and she was so happy that she was here. And she was like, you know what? You were right. He wasn't for me. And I kind of had to learn my lesson the hard way. And I wish I would have listened. But I'm also happy that I got to make this experience and kind of see for myself. Ooh, we have some cards that popped out. Um, and of course, like I love when you guys are open-minded and you come back and you let me know what has happened and you also see for yourself that sometimes you may not want to hear the truth and you have to learn it or experience it the hard way before you can then actually appreciate when you receive the truth and act on it without having to every single time learn it the hard way. And that's where I can see here within the fool group number two that you are going to go through one of these phases as a surprise because you thought that you've overcome that, but I think we're all constantly going through this. And I am no exception. There are also things where I feel like, no, I'm good, or I know this, or I know what I'm doing. And then you get reminded by the universe that maybe you should have listened. Maybe you should have been more open-minded. Maybe you shouldn't have just thought that you knew what you were doing. And maybe you shouldn't have shrugged off certain pieces of advice. Next up, we've got the Ten of Swords as well as the Queen of Coins. Now, the Ten of Swords is a card of being completely done with over-communication. And the thing here is that one thing I see as a surprise is that you are changing your friend circle in a pretty abrupt way. You are exchanging some people because the Queen of Coins shows me that you've just reached like a different place where you see finances not as like only a stressful topic, but you're also getting more interested in investing and basically becoming financially unshakable and unbreakable. And some people 
are just so far removed from that being a possibility for them or a reality for them that you don't want to keep friends around that just constantly kind of like drag you down or constantly make you feel like things aren't possible because it's just for you it's just not the kind of vibration you really need at this moment you need more supportive vibration you need a vibration of belief and those are the type of individuals that you want to keep around you from here on out so i've got my runes here and i am going to intuitively pick a rune for you group number two all right what do we have here let's make sure we are all in focus so i believe here actually what we've got is ansus ansus corresponds to the letter a in our alphabet and this rune is a rune of communication but also being true being real sharing wisdom and that is where i can see that things are kind of shifting and changing because you're not entertaining people anymore that you feel make the same mistakes again and again and when you try to communicate with them they take it the wrong way or they feel like you are placing yourself above them that's just not your world group number two you're a very drama free person let's do one more rune oh okay here we go let's make sure this is all in focus group number two so here within this rune what we actually have is Sawulo or Sawilo, depending on how you would like to say it. So Sawilo is the rune of the sun, of strength, of energy. This is a rune that also represents like resources and success. So I see that by just approaching life and relationships as you're doing moving forward, what comes as a big surprise for you is how quickly you will actually become more successful the more you also energetically align yourself with success. It is like kind of attracting success by proximity. So if there is someone who is really good at trading or really good at stocks and you become friends with them, you hang out with them, they're a very positive person, chances are you will be successful by proximity, open your own account, start doing trading and investing in stocks by yourself and doing it with a lot more confidence than if you were just surrounded by naysayers that are telling you oh no that's probably going to go wrong you don't know what you're doing so on and so forth the same goes with spending time with people who are successful at their job and they don't complain you will most likely also become more successful by proximity because you are surrounded with good energy in regards and in relation to work and that is going to affect you differently than if you're surrounded by people who constantly complain about their jobs and feel as though they just want to do the absolute bare minimum so you really are the average of the five people you spend the most time with look around group number two who are those five people and would you be happy to become more like them and a very hard truth to swallow for a lot of people who are in romantic relationships and i had to swallow that as well is if you look at your partner is that someone you want to become like is that someone that you look at and you feel like yeah i would be happy to be more like you or is that someone that you don't truly want to assimilate with if you are very deeply honest with yourself so i'll leave you to ponder on that group number two i will clear and cleanse the space and i'll be right back so we can move a little more deeply into the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you welcome back group number two so let's delve even more deeply into your reading shall we so we can figure out the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you so first up we have got the four of swords so i see that you will have to take rest and having to take rest in this way is often also indicative of the fact that you will get to a point where you're like nope i'm tired or i'm not feeling 100 percent. i've got a headache i'm feeling like i've got a cold coming on and you're just like no I'm going to take a bath, I'm going to rest, I'm going to watch some Netflix series, and I'm just going to chill because I know that getting up, it's going to be detrimental. It's best for me to just lay low, 
and properly recuperate, properly regain my strength before I do anything else. So this is a very wise choice, group number two. You are an old soul. You are the type of person that knows when to take some time to relax. But the thing is, sometimes you need to be forced to chill and to just take a step back. Here within the Eight of Swords, this card showing up again shows us that there are some mental blockages that your guides are trying to get you to look at. These mental blockages do surround chilling, relaxing, and taking time off. While you are capable of doing it, you are still not doing it enough, group number two. And that is where your guides are trying to say to you, hey, it is time for you to break through some blockages, to break through some beliefs that aren't necessarily true, like that you have to work extremely hard to get great results, or that in order for you to be successful, you have to work yourself to the bone. That is not the case, group number two. That is not something that you should continue to perpetuate in your mind. The hanged man is showing up to tell you to see things from a different perspective. This is always about a change of perspective and not taking any kind of impulsive action. So before you get back into the hamster wheel, group number two, and continue just running endlessly and in a sense aimlessly, actually take time to meditate. I have had to force myself to do this for the last couple days, group number two, to actually go to bed at like 8, 9 p.m., wake up super early, I'm talking like five in the morning, and actually take the first hours of my day, like one or two hours, to meditate, to journal, to reframe how I see things, and to rewire my brain in order to create the kind of reality that I want because you have to overcome the habit of being yourself in order to actually have new experiences be something that you are able to access, right? Because you are living in the known right now. So to access any kind of new experience, which could be something new that is absolutely fabulous, like living your dream life, <laughs> group number two, in order to access that, you have to overcome the habit of doing everything you've done up until now because it has brought you to this point, but it's not yet the right formula for you to create your dream life. You have to adjust a little bit in order to get there. And making these adjustments every single day are where the universe is kind of trying to call you out and say to you, are you doing the work? Are you really making these adjustments every day? And have you grown complacent in some ways in which you can maybe free yourself from the overthinking, from the constraints, from feeling like, well, I'm not sure what to change. I'm already doing everything to actually taking more action that is getting you to where you need to go. So next up, we've got the green Tara. The green Tara shows us supreme protection. Now, group number two, supreme protection is here for those who not only need it, but who have earned it. The green Tara shows us that cords are being cut between you and people who kind of had an evil eye placed on you. You see, we've got this third eye chakra that's opened up. So even as you're receiving this reading, you know precisely who that is. And you're moving beyond limitations that they tried to place on you. You know, when people project their own insecurities onto you and what they think is possible in this lifetime and you simply are unavailable for it, you reject it. Yeah, group number two, the green Tara shows us here that you trust, you know that you're protected and you're moving beyond any kind of limitations that others may have projected onto you or may try to place you into, like placing you into a box. Now, group number two, this doesn't come as a surprise since you are someone who is very strong-minded and who has actually overcome a lot of adversity. It's like when certain people think that they can make you sweat, you think to yourself, I eat situations like this for breakfast because <laughs> I've been through so much worse. And the thing is like anything that tests you, you're ready for. After all that you've experienced, group number two, I want you to know that you are prepared. And being divinely protected, just trusting that nothing bad is going to happen to you, that is already a huge part of the battle of actually 
then going through life in a very unscathed and guided type of way because you have to trust in order for that protection to be there. If you're on an energetic frequency of distrust, of uncertainty, then of course it will be very challenging for anything to be able to align in a protected way. So it's really beautiful, group number two, that you're more and more blindly trusting in your vision that you have for yourself in your life. Next up, we have got Lord Ganesh. So this shows us here that obstacles are being removed. This will come as a surprise. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. And this card is a card of infinite abundance. So obstacles being removed, that means, for example, not having to pay as many taxes as you thought you would have to pay, not having as difficult as a time in your business as you expected, just having some abundance come into your life randomly that you didn't expect that comes as a complete surprise. And I'm getting a lot of gold and literal gold, okay? Like a piece of jewelry or a literal little piece of gold that you are receiving that is going to be like the ultimate confirmation that this life is an abundant one and you have the spiritual connection that is undeniably here to protect you. Next up, we've got the Master Buddha. The Master Buddha brings a message of increased awareness and a deep connection. You trust your inner voice. The more you trust your inner voice, the more confirmations are being sent your way. And the more that you can tell, oh, there is something here that is divine. There is something here that is out of the norm, but in a good way, as I'm constantly getting little symbols sent to me in the form of, as already mentioned, gold in the form of another thing that I'm getting here is pink and red flowers and also I want you to know blue ribbons that is another thing that you will see shortly after receiving this reading that will remind you that these unexpected surprises were placed into your life on purpose it is no coincidence group number two so at this point, your reading has been extensive, detailed, and very long. And I don't want to make these videos too crazy long here on YouTube. So instead, what I will do is I will post the extended version of your reading on my Patreon. So there you can watch the rest of this prediction if you want to, because the extensions on Patreon are for a smaller audience and they are more precise, they're uncensored. I can say anything I want on there, which is like a creator's dream, really, because nothing is off limits. So if you're thinking about joining the patron, there are already dozens of patron-only videos on there. Just know that if you've already enjoyed the readings on my channel, you already know what will expect you on patron. It's that, but better, but more accurate, more precise, more detailed. So just rest assured that this will be a space in which you find comfort and in which you will receive the rest of these divine messages that were meant for you. So group number two, whether you are a patron or a part of the unicorn family on YouTube, I will always be uploading free, very high quality, extensive, long readings for you guys because that is my soul's purpose and my mission. It's to support you, to provide you with value and to always be your big sis that you can count on. So group two, thank you so much for being here and I'll catch you over on my Patreon or in one of my upcoming videos. Hello, group number three, and welcome to your reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. So you chose the Cosmic Oracle deck as well as the Smoky Quartz Crystal. This is the beautiful Smoky Quartz. This is actually one of my favorite stones. I had almost forgotten how much I love these smoky quartz crystals because I haven't used one for meditation in a long time, but you, group number three, inspired me to do so. So let's move further into your reading, or shall I say, let's even get into your reading, group number three. So lean back, relax, and enjoy your prediction as we figure out the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. So we've got card one, card two, and card number three. 
Let's start off with the first card. So first up, we've got hope. All right. So what comes as an unexpected surprise for you, group number three, is that you're never going to be losing hope when it comes to actually living your dream life, having your dream career, and making your dream amount of money. You see yourself as a portal for abundance and as a portal for your dreams. And no matter what anyone may say or how anyone may treat you, no, you are not accepting their reality as yours. You you constantly see the hope in a situation and rather than taking on the mindset of a negative possibility actually coming true you are seeing hope in the fact that there are infinite amount of possibilities in which a situation can work out why choose to believe that it will be challenging or not work out when you just might as well believe that things will work out for you and next up we've got letting go so anything that you feel has just been holding you back, you are letting go of because there is no space for this. You reject any kind of reality that is based in fear and based in confirming that things will be challenging. And I want you to know in letting go that this also entails letting go of other people who you feel are kind of like negative Nancy's group number three, because you just can't. The smoky quartz is actually a crystal that helps you to get rid of any negative and unwanted energies and that is just overall the vibe that I see for you here that you will be really surprised about how easily quickly and without any feeling of regret you just cut people off that you can tell are not here for a journey in the long run that is rooted in self-belief and accomplishment. I see here within the strength card and the tiger that this is really the spirit animal that you correspond to and connect with the most at this point in time, group number three. So leave a little tiger emoji below in the comment section to let me and others know that you belong to group number three because that's the only way you would know and to reinforce your connection with your spirit animal of the tiger we have got this black and white tiger don't be surprised if you see a black and white tiger shortly after receiving this reading and that will show you the synchronicity of the fact that this was the right reading for you and that it is okay to let go of connections and people that you just no longer align with it is okay to realize that you are on a different page than someone who was your friend at one point but you can see you have just outgrown them their mindset and where they're going and it's not that you feel like you're better than anyone or like you're more successful it's just that you don't want to surround yourself with people who you know don't have a winner's mindset because it will affect you as much as we want to be kind to everyone and in inclusive of everyone the five people you spend the most time with do have a profound effect on your life and how your life turns out so choosing that very wisely and reminding yourself like why do you feel bad for creating your life in a way that makes you happy and if that means that you have to let go of people who just don't really bring much to the table energetically spiritually and positivity wise why do you feel bad you only have one life your most valuable asset is your time why are you wasting some of it feeling bad of letting go of someone who probably wouldn't feel as bad of letting go of you as you feel about letting go of them and it's not like you are doing something to be malicious or mean like you're literally just making sure you don't waste your life like you're literally just making sure that you don't live life as though you have another one on reserve because you don't group number three if someone had to tell you this and you've been kind of living life like you've got a spare one in the closet you don't act now get rid of the naysayers immediately the three of crystals is about leaving behind what you don't need even if that's more people and more opportunities and grabbing onto the things that you know are meant for you that you know will drive you forward that you know will push you to be your best self the three of crystals is about looking forward not looking back not being afraid to grab the opportunity that resonates and to leave the others behind because quite frankly speaking group number three what is the alternative because would the people that you're too polite to let go of would they waste their time and energy and money in keeping you in their life i don't think so but you know time is money time is energy 
don't waste it on someone who isn't doing the same for you and who isn't filling up your cup. I see here in the Eight of Blades at group number three, we will have to work on this. It's not an overnight thing, but it's definitely something you needed to hear because the Eight of Blades shows me that you are the type of person that can sometimes feel very like guilty, not wanting to end relationships you can feel as though you don't want to judge a book by its cover you don't want to be that person that kind of ends things you would rather be the one that others end things with i know it's like so controversial but group number three isn't that just life <laughs> anyways oh we have a card that popped right out, which is the tower card. Group number three, there are some huge profound changes and surprises that are coming towards you. And yes, there is going to be a falling apart, a breaking off of a relationship that will require strength of you to let go of, but you know it's for the best. The tower shows us here that this innate strength that you've got within you has never been so necessary as in the upcoming weeks and months within your life. And it's not something that spirit wants you to worry about or be afraid of, but it's more like a reminder to trust your gut feeling and your instinct and your intuition. And I too, group number three, have had to learn this at times the hard way. I'm still learning it the hard way. Even if you're looking for some sort of service provider, even if it's like a tarot reader, look at their setup, look at their language, the way they speak, the way their hands look, their jewelry, their cards, their nails, whatever it is that's in the frame and ask yourself, is this the vibe that you really resonate with? Like, are they in line with where you're trying to go? Are they in line with your values? Are they actually even inspiring you in a way? If not, then why are you there? Because it's probably not going to be of the highest value to you. You want to go where you feel like you have like a lux, elevated and well-kept feeling. And it's different for each and every one of us. I had to learn that, for example, when it comes to services like accounting and stuff like that. Why go to someone's rundown office just because they were recommended to me and they're set in their ways, they have a very old mindset, they've probably never even like placed an online order before. How is that like the right fit for me? compared to going to an up and coming accountant or firm with people who are into online businesses with like an office that they take pride in keeping in good condition and everything. All of these external factors, they are a reflection of what goes on internally and what you can expect. So yeah, this may just be like a superficial thing, like the setup, the cards, everything like that, but it is a reflection of what is actually happening on a deeper level too. So of course we don't want to immediately judge books by their cover, but the cover is important and the cover usually does give you an idea of what's going on on the inside of the book and whether that's fitting for you. There's a reason why covers exist, why we can see and why our senses can perceive. Next, we have the five of swords. Now, this shows me that you realize that there are definitely some people and some things in your life that were not in alignment and have fallen out of alignment. And it is okay to just have elevated. It is okay to leave something behind, to try something new, to change, to have a new obsession, a new thing that you're into, and at the same time, kind of getting rid of what doesn't serve you. You don't owe anyone an explanation, nor do you owe it to anyone to stay stuck in a situation in which you know you have outgrown. Now, the Page of Swords here shows me that there is someone who will tell you this very clearly. They're younger than you. They're an air sign, a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. They are not me. I am a Cancerian. So this is like a younger sibling or a younger friend that will say to you, hey, why are you allowing these relationships in your life that are clearly in a way beneath you group number three where people clearly don't appreciate you to the extent that they should and you're not being treated with as much respect as i know you deserve and you know when you've got a friend or an acquaintance that tells you like hey i don't know if you're being treated fairly or in a right way here rather than getting upset or feeling like well is this really their business? Try to reflect on it a little bit because sometimes people can see things that we miss out on 
and it may give you like a huge epiphany a huge aha moment of being like oh my goodness wait maybe i was overlooking this all this time and i do deserve better now in walk your truth we have this palm print in the universe and you are meant to leave an imprint on earth and on future generations group number three you are meant to do something that is going to outlive you and that is going to have a very unique kind of touch or finish to it however you'd like to say it and why we've got this very unique touch to it is because in case you didn't know every fingerprint is unique like everybody's fingerprint is absolutely one in eight billion and here within walk your truth you have your one in eight billion way of doing things and sometimes you might think that you're chaotic anxiety ridden all over the place disorganized over the top or kind of very timid personality that that may be something that is quote unquote bad or like it's something that is holding you back but often these are the very things that make you you and these are also often the very things that you can turn into your strengths and that make you a powerful leader a problem solver someone who does things in their own way so never feel as though the things that you see as areas of needing improvement like those can't turn into strengths for you next up we've got the cosmic connection and we've got this kind of ant-like looking creature if you will um i thought we had what did you see group number three comment below i saw an ant-like looking creature but now i see it it's someone sitting in like the lotus position i probably saw this ant-like looking creature because i love ants and i love this channel on youtube called ants canada i know very random but that may have subconsciously just triggered me to immediately see an ant rather than someone sitting in the lotus position and meditating and having all of their chakras align but you know i like to keep it real with you guys and tell you precisely what it is that i perceive even if it is maybe out of the norm so here within cosmic connection we've also got the master number 11 and master number 11 is a master number of starting start meditating group number three no more excuses if you've fallen off this is the perfect time to get back in all right the perfect time is now not tomorrow not in a month not in two weeks not when you're feeling better not when you get a better job not when you have more time not when you're less stressed not when you have done x y or z the perfect time for you to align yourself ground yourself and step into more meditation is now and there are so many great meditation videos on youtube there's so many great ways in which you can learn to meditate that are just explained on the internet you can find anything you want on the internet you can learn anything and it's time that you make use of it and it's time that anything that is out of alignment gets pushed back into alignment by you group number three and that you eradicate any negativity as we spoke about and connectivity to you picking the smoky quartz because the thing with you group number three is that you make excuses and give so many chances to others that you have never even experienced these this many chances yourself nor has anyone ever given you this many chances actually a lot of times people smell the kindness and the compassion off of you and they ruthlessly take advantage of it they take advantage of the softness they take advantage of the fact that you are a patient person and you do believe in the good and we don't want to change that about you group number three not at all but we just want to make sure that the right people get to experience that that the right people get to be the ones that are in your presence because everyone else just doesn't deserve it group number three there's no other way to put it so i am going to clear and cleanse the space group three you don't need to do anything just continue to lean back relax and enjoy and i'll be back for us to delve even more deeply into your prediction about all of the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you welcome back group number three so we are not playing here is our divination board which we're going to get into right now so let me just get out my astro dice so we can figure out more of the unexpected surprises that are coming to you so let's see what spirit has for us we've got the number seven first and foremost group number three now the number seven is a number of reflection of being in a situation where you are definitely taking on 
self-criticism and taking on additional information, but at the same time, you are not here for unsolicited advice. And then, okay, we've also got the number one for you and being more you-centric, group number three. If you've never had the opportunity to be quote-unquote selfish, this is your sign. This is your symbol to think of you, to think of what you desire, where you want to go in life, and also what you want to accept and what you're completely okay with leaving in the past that never served you to begin with. And I'm now going to intuitively pull out some charms out of our charm bag and see what we've got for you. All right, so we've got a heart locket on Ask Again, as well as an elephant on not yet i just want to bring this a little higher up so you can see very precisely what charms we've got here so i want you to know here that when it comes to your forever love if that is a question that you had within this reading or you're wondering what's going to happen in your love life we need to ask again and when it comes to feeling like you are already at the end point of your wisdom, like you've already learned everything, not yet, group number three. There's still much growth and wisdom for you to acquire. And I do also see here that you're not the kind of person that holds grudges. That's what I see with the elephant and not yet. You're not yet the kind of person that kind of reduces others to what they have done in the past. So here with the not known and the sun, I want you to understand that when it comes to the next destination that you're going to be going to, the next sunny, warm place, we don't know precisely where that is going to be just yet. And with the glasses here on Ask Again and the Heart Locket, but kind of being in the center of our divination board, it makes it clear that the person that you will be with that will kind of lock your heart that will seal the deal as someone that wears glasses and this can also indicate someone who's like a little bit nerdy group number three and someone that just overall sees you clearly for who you are this is also about sight so let's see what spirit wants to add into your reading we've got x n as well as you i've seen a brand called n u x nux okay let's move a little further into it We've also got Y and E. Okay, very interesting. All right, so we've got some sort of X situation and we've got a Y and then UN or new. X, Y, new. So your X, asking yourself why they were the way that they were, but understanding that you need something new. This is not for you anymore group number three it never was for you and you deserve better you deserve a situation in which you're not confused because the thing about exes past relationships is that if you feel confused they're usually not the right one for you if you feel like you don't know what's going on if you're not sure how much they like you if you can't answer the question with yes that they would be there for sure if you got into an accident, they would help you out financially. They would support you no matter what skeletons in your closet that they would learn of. If you can't answer that with a yes and trusting them with your whole life, then you know it's just probably either not the right person or you just don't know them well enough yet. So when you are a light worker, you are being led to help others. Let's see what message that we're receiving here. You are a light worker. You are being led to help others. Your gifts matter, queen. You have a unique way of helping people. You are being called to share your gifts with more people. Keeping your gifts from others is selfish. You are born with these gifts for a reason. You are a powerful light worker that needs to be seen. Follow your inspired actions toward helping others. Lead with your heart. Affirm with me. I am a light worker and I am ready to help others. Let's say it again, group number three. I am a light worker and I am ready to help others. I love this group number three. So let's see what else we're going to receive in this portion of your reading, shall we? So 
Next up, we've got Soul Retrieval. So as you can see here, we've also got a butterfly that seems to have just gotten out of the chrysalis, out of this cocoon stage, if you will. And we also have the number 49. In soul Retrieval, we can see here that it is time for you to come out of your chrysalis, out of your kind of like change stage so now you're moving into your glow up stage and boy group number three the post breakup glow up stage is usually so profound i mean the way i have seen people glow up after a breakup with someone that they were just never meant to be with it is insane how much especially women glow up after breaking up with a guy it's like within three business days of breaking up they've got a higher paying job They've got their dream home that they're working towards. They've purchased a new vehicle. They look absolutely snatched. You're living healthier. You're wealthier than you've ever been. It's like getting rid of someone that you're not meant to be with can just be so profoundly life-changing in the most positive way. And in the Three of Cups reverse, I also see here no more alcohol for you, group number three. If you are the type of person that never really drank to begin with, then this is something that will just continue for you. No change there. But if you have had some alcohol <laughs> in the past days, weeks, months, if this has been an experience that is part of you, then I just want you to know sobering up, quite literally speaking, is what comes next because you're realizing this is just not for me. This is just not helping me, serving me. It isn't really my wavelength. It isn't my thing at all. And I see here within the lovers that also someone who really cares about you will encourage you to do so. It doesn't have to be a romantic partner, but it can be that under the influence of a romantic partner, you actually find your way to sobriety. You find your way to feeling really comfortable being sober, not being under the influence of anything, and really being yourself and seeing how loved that you can be and that you're not boring or whatever society tries to make us feel like we are when we're not drinking or we're not partaking in these socially accepted um, like uses of these like mind-altering substances. So I just want you to know here within the lovers and the three of cups reverse is that even when you have just your naked bare self in front of the right person, they will love and respect you for it so much and it will actually bring them a lot closer to you. It will never be the reason why they don't want to be with you or they feel as though you're too boring or anything like that. So don't feel that way, group number three. I know it's easier said than done, but just remember that you are so interesting, so worthy and so loved and it's just about time that you get that, that you understand that too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear and cleanse the space and then I'll be right back so we can move even more deeply into your reading. Once again, group number three, my channel is here for leisure, for connecting, for vibing. You don't need to do anything. Continue to lean back, relax and enjoy. And I will be back with the continued pick a card reading for you. And I will be right back with you to delve even more deeply into your psychic reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming for you. Hello, group number three, welcome back. So here I am using a deck that a beautiful subscriber of mine actually sent to me. Let me just show you guys. Um, this is what the deck looks like. Shannon wrote me such a sweet letter. I can't, all the way from California. You guys know I live in Switzerland and look at the thought and effort and love that she put into her love is always the way deck. And she said that I inspired her as well, which just makes me so proud and so thankful. So anyways, you guys, let's move more deeply into the reading. I just wanted to give her a shout out and just, you know, share with the unicorn fam what beautiful things are going on on this channel in our close surroundings and in this world. So love is always the way. It's trying to communicate to you to open your heart chakra to love. Group number three, have you been kind of closed off? Because as an unexpected surprise, what's coming to you is that when you open your heart chakra to love, 
you also raise the vibration of love in your life and it feels like you are wildly in love again we've got this tornado of love of these hearts and i want you to understand that of course love can be scary and it's never easy to put yourself out there and to make yourself vulnerable right and to put your emotions out there in the open there's always a risk of being hurt but being in love if it's something you've ever felt wow we had the ten of cups that literally you guys the connection i have to my cards the ten of cups is a card of an absolute soulmate connection absolute fulfilling romantic love it's almost the best card when it comes to love of the entire tarot i would say it is the best but of course everyone has their own reading style to me the ten of cups is the card of ultimate completion of building a family of having a spouse a soulmate a twin flame a forever partner a husband a wife someone with whom you parent with someone with whom you build a home with and have children with so literally this card popping out of the pile while shuffling as we were just talking about raising the vibration of love putting yourself out there and knowing that there is always a possibility of being hurt but taking that chance is beyond worth it if that means that you get to experience the ten of cups and yeah sometimes we will take a chance and it won't be it it won't be the right person it won't be the right situation and that's okay group number three it's really fine because whenever you experience something that isn't for you it just makes it more clear who and what is for you and that way you can make better decisions more discerning decisions moving forward and you'll know the right person when you see them. But I just want you to know that what comes as a surprise is once you get rid of the unwanted and the negativity and your vibration is no longer attached to that and you open your heart chakra to love, you raise the vibration of love in your life. That is when your romantic love, your kind of forever love will open up. So there will be a complete renewal of a current relationship if you are in a relationship right now, group number three, and if you're single, I just want you to know that then is when you will meet your person. And the five of crystals shows us here that when you meet that person, it will feel like not just butterflies in your stomach, it's like you feel the whole zoo, <laughs> group number three. And the five of crystals is definitely showing us that there will be some part of you that feels like this is too good to be true. It's like internal conflict. Like, do I really deserve this? Group number three, in case nobody has told you and in case you needed a little bit of affirmation and confirmation, yes, you are worth it, group number three. You've worked hard on yourself. You've overcome a lot of challenges in your life that you get to be proud of. And I just want to remind you, you are a really great person. You are someone who deserves the same love that they give to the world. And wow the sun another exceedingly positive card group number three the sun is a card of warmth of togetherness of family of having a bond that is unbreakable and a feeling really taken care of and protected the sun is symbolic of being able to move forward freely not feeling trapped not feeling like you've got to prove anything but actually just surprisingly for you things turning out for the better. So if you're right now in a little bit of a challenging situation, group number three, I just want you to know that what comes as a surprise is how quickly the tables will turn for the positive and especially in love, especially in romantic love. If you're struggling, for example, financially, economically, knowing the right person in love and having someone uplift you or even being able to use them for advice on how to get out of it, is also going to greatly serve you and be a huge part of overcoming some obstacles and some challenges. Now, the magician shows us here that group number three, there is nothing that is too hard for you to learn or to do differently. The magician shows me that you are devoted to creating a type of life with another person in which you're open to learning their love language and you're open to trying out how they want to be loved. And next up here within the King of Coins, I do also see that the person that your forever love is meant to be with is someone who is really good when it comes to finances, someone who is great when it comes to for example, like investing and creating a life that 
makes sense financially that is economically viable so that means you won't have to worry about money in the long term having this person by your side because they know a lot about it so they probably studied something with finance something with like business finance something with investing and overall they are definitely someone who is less of the star of the show in your relationship you are more of the shine bright one and here within the queen of cups i do also just want you to know that they're the type of person that always fills your cup quite literally speaking this will be a routine with your romantic partner where they make coffee or tea for you every morning they fill up your cup every morning they make sure that you feel really taken care of and in a way you feel like there's nothing that you're still wanting like you can rely on them and they want you to be well rested they want you to be well put together they want you to have beauty sleep and it doesn't matter even if you look like a little disheveled you still you know got messy hair morning breath whatever they don't mind and it makes you feel comfortable it makes you feel alive in the most beautiful sense because you feel like you can really be yourself you can be all dolled up and put together in a way that you could walk a red carpet but you can also just be yourself in your sweats and with like a messy outfit messy hair and they wouldn't judge you they're like right there by your side and they understand that you have a lot of different facets to you group number three so i'm going to clear and cleanse the space again and i'll be right back for us to move even more deeply into your reading about the next unexpected surprises coming to you so group number three just hold on tight and i will be right back all right hello group number three so let's move a little more deeply into it shall we let's see what the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you truly are so we have got the haystack what comes as a surprise to you is karma but for you karma is good because you will reap what you have sown and that is usually always something that people say when another person has done something wrong right when another person has done something really bad people say oh karma is gonna get you or karma is gonna come for you but with you group number three that's actually a good thing it's like please i wish karma would get me i wish karma would come for me next up we've got the broom as well as the boot wow amazing news amazing surprises group number three in the broom we've got a new home and we've also got you completely changing your attitude your vibe your energy because the thing here is that a new living space will just give you a completely refreshed energetic frequency it's like overall you feel so differently about yourself you feel so differently about life being in a new environment and a new space and you are finally reaping what you have sown and it shows in your home by the type of furnishings that you're able to afford the area that you live in actually like owning a home if you wanted to own a home so that comes as a surprise faster than you expected and the boot shows us that getting there is about increasing your efforts to achieve your goals so i know group number three sometimes you're just so tired and you just can't seem to get yourself to go the extra mile the extra like 100 meters or 100 yards to get to that next level but just push yourself through it because often what makes the big difference between someone who is extremely successful and someone who is quote unquote mediocre or takes a very long time to get to their dream is just that extra bit of endurance that extra bit of discipline and you've got it in you group number three but the question is is it worth it for you to use your energy to get there because sometimes when we're chasing dreams we can get discouraged or we can feel like well it's still so far away but i just want to remind you group number three like often things are more around the corner than you expected and it's time for you to finally get that new home to get that revamp of your living space done you deserve it you've been eyeing it up for a long time and it's about time that you finally step into the energy of deserving this so we've got isis next which actually corresponds to the message of magic manifesting your dreams 
visions and goals are becoming a reality. Stay focused. That's literally what we just spoke about in the broom and the boot, how your new home, your dream and your vision for your living space is becoming a reality. Stay focused, increasing your efforts to achieve your goals. And the boot also shows like a working shoe, a working outfit. So making sure that every day, even when you get dressed, you already prime yourself for work. Some people feel like they get a lot more work done when they dress a little bit more fancy and they put on makeup and they do their hair and they just like look on the external plane a little bit more put together and as already mentioned like fancy or lugs for some people it's wearing very practical clothes that makes them feel like they can take on anything at work so it's really about you knowing are you more of the practical type of person that then feels motivated to get more done or do you feel when you're wearing practical clothes like it's more of a chill situation because i know for me there are times where i like to wear chill clothes like now for example i am wearing like a chill like lounge set as you can see um but it fluctuates i'm doing that because now i feel comfortable and very much like messages are coming through easily wearing something very comfy but if i need to do uncomfortable work if i have to do work that has to do with just like office things that aren't creative that aren't doing readings then i like to put myself together in a more professional manner and to look a little bit more luxe a little bit more as they say bougie and everyone is different like for some people jeans and a t-shirt is their work attire and for others that is just like feels casual it feels more like not actually getting so much done so you have to know yourself in this group number three and then act on it so next up we've got the three of swords so what comes as a surprise is actually that you're noticing oh my goodness i have been doing things wrong all along when it comes to my clothing and it's not just about like personal style group number three it's also realizing i have maybe been hindering myself of achieving my highest goals of being as confident as I can be because I just didn't actually even use clothes as a superpower or as a way of making myself more comfortable and making myself feel more empowered because you can definitely use clothes and similar things to just up your self-confidence and then therefore also get more done within your work and your private life too and then we've also got the nine of wands now the nine of wands group number three this shows us here that you are meant to protect your closet as crazy as it sounds there are people who want some things out of your closet who want to borrow it and will not give it back in a good condition and the thing is like you can borrow out things that are not super important to you but remember what you wear on your body and on your back is sacred so even for example purchasing clothes that are sustainably made it is a different vibration than clothes that were made in an environment in which people in poverty and in sickness had to work hard and in a an unrelenting way to create something for you just so that it could be bought at a super cheap price so that's precisely here within the nine of wands where you're being called to remember like vibration is something we don't see but it affects everything and everything has a vibration and you've got to ask yourself whether certain things really align with your vibration before you do them before you bring them into your life because you never know what kind of effect it will have on you subconsciously or even quite obviously so you want to make sure that you are aligning the vibration that you want with how you purchase things with the places that you frequent and remember every single dollar that you spend is a vote and you want to vote people in who you feel have a positive impact and who you feel are doing good things with money not people who are kind of greedy and will do anything even destroy the planet destroy families destroy children's like lives and childhoods just to be richer and more powerful so we got to remember as consumers we're actually far more powerful than we feel like we are than we know that we are and we need to be taught differently we need to be taught that we do actually make a real difference in the marketplace and that what we say does go and when we're not cheap and we 
pay attention to what we're supporting, we might be or feel like we are few, but actually we are quite powerful once numbers even add up a little bit. So group number three, this is the reading that I've received up until this point. I will clear and cleanse the space intuitively for you again, and I'll be back into your prediction to guide you even more deeply into the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. Hello, group number three. So let's delve a little bit more deeply into your tarot reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. So let's see what we've got. First up, we've got the panther, spirit animal vibes. So the panther is about reclaiming your power, especially if you ever felt like you lost it or if you had someone that made you feel really small, group number three, remind yourself of who you are, what that felt like, not to drag you back to that place, but to just be like, this is how I would have handled it today. And even write it down if necessary, which I always think it's necessary because it will actually help to teach you to react more quickly to BS in the future when it comes your way. And I just want to remind you of who you are, group number three. You're fierce, you're powerful, and a lot of people are even fearful of you. We've also got the number 44 here. If that seems familiar, you know why. Because it connects to the panther, which right now we're getting spirit animal vibes from. And with the squirrel spirit, the message that we're receiving for you, group number three, is to believe in yourself you dream and think too small for what you're capable of. And it's not to make you feel bad, it's just to remind you of the fact that your dreams are so achievable. Dream even bigger, group number three. Not that anything is unattainable, everything is doable that we can think of, and everything started in imagination. Even, for example, these cards, it was a figment of someone's imagination that was then brought into reality. The same goes for anything that's man-made, group number three, even the top that you're wearing right now, the sweater, the t-shirt, whatever it is that you're wearing on your back, wearing on your bottoms, someone thought about it, someone had to draw it, create it, and the first time anyone ever made a t-shirt, for example, it was just their imagination. They didn't know whether it would actually work or not. They didn't know whether it would actually even be useful, right? They just had to imagine it and then try it and do it. And I want to remind you of the fact that everything started that way. So if you can imagine it, you can also do it and you can make it successful, group number three. Next up, we've got the Seven of Cups, also known as the Sieben der Kelche. So in German, Sieben der Kelche, Seven of Cups shows us you've got options, group number three. And you've got options in love, you've got options when it comes to your professional life. You just have a lot of options within your life in general. And a lot of these options are also polar opposites. And now it's time for you to pick the possibility that feels the best. And I would say what feels the best, group number three, is to follow your instinct, right? To follow your passions rather than to follow what you have been taught is possible. You know, if you've been taught it's possible to go to school and then get a good education and get a good job and work in that job for the rest of your life until you retire, okay, that is a possibility. But you can also choose the polar opposite of leading a life of traveling, of exploring, of adventure, of excitement, and of maybe switching jobs, doing something else, following a kind of education system in which you actually learn and you don't feel enslaved or like captured. You can also follow your dreams of becoming a YouTuber or a business owner, a tarot card creator, a tarot deck creator is what I meant to say, which by the way, I'm gonna be offering a course on that very soon, group number three. So I just want you to know here, in the Seven of Cups, choose from the possibility that excites you, not the one that you've been taught is like the most likely to happen or the most possible. We don't operate in that frequency on this channel, group number three, and in the Unicorn Army. We operate on the frequency of creating and living based on what our heart desires and based on what our journey is. Yeah, becoming a YouTuber, odds and chances are tiny if you think about it. But from my viewpoint, having as much passion as I have to provide you guys with value, guidance, to be your big sister, to be a support, to teach others that you can follow your dreams and make it, 
from that standpoint, for me, it's not so unlikely to be able to make it. It's actually come to a point where failure is not an option. And I want you to get to that point as well, group number three. So this video has already been so long. Your reading has already been so extensive. I don't want to make this too crazy long here on YouTube. So I'm deciding at this point I will upload the extended version of your reading. So the rest of this onto my patron. So my unicorn army over on patron. You will, of course, have access to it. And any of you who are wondering about what is different on Patreon versus YouTube and you've watched the video this long, let me just tell you, you already love how the readings are on this channel. Clearly, if not, you wouldn't still be here. So if you like this style of reading and you want to figure out more, you will definitely be very happy being a patron because there are patron-only videos on Patreon. You can leave comments that I will see. You can request videos. You guys, even this video, I created from a patron poll because you guys decided what the next video topic was going to be. And the videos on Patreon, the extensions, are just more precise. They are completely uncensored. Nothing is off topic because I can say anything on Patreon because it's a platform that doesn't kind of censor creators, if you know what I mean. And it's just a smaller audience that I'm reading for on there. So the readings are more precise and more in depth. So group three. I would like to thank you so much for your support here on YouTube and for being here, for spending this divine time and space with me. And don't worry, I will always be uploading a ton of free readings here on YouTube, a ton of content that is super detailed, super lengthy, that you can enjoy at any given point in time. So never worry about that. So group three, thank you for being here. You can check out all the links in the description box that are relevant to this video. And I can't wait to connect with you during one of my upcoming predictions. Hello, group number four. Welcome to your super in-depth psychic tarot card reading on all of the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. You chose the gold foil tarot in connectivity to the pyrite crystal. Here we go. This is the beautiful pyrite. In case you didn't know, this stone is also known as fool's gold because, well, it looks like gold, but it's not. And the thing about the pyrite is that just as gold is symbolic of wealth, the pyrite is also set to attract more abundance into your life. So more real gold. That's what you're attracting by having the fool's gold within your life. So it's almost like a fake it till you make it kind of vibe. But let's move into your reading group number four to see precisely what these next unexpected surprises are that are coming into your life. First up, we've got the Queen of Cups, so the Queen of Water Signs. Think Pisces, Cancerian, Scorpio type of energy, but overall just like a mom friend or like actually having your mom come back into your life in the best way possible. The Queen of Cups is someone who has course corrected, who is empathetic, who wants to support you. This is a good woman who wants to lift you up, who wants to build you into the best version of yourself. And this coming as a surprise is a beautiful, gorgeous way for us to start off your reading group number four and an amazing message to uplift you and remind you that there are female figures in your life that just want you to win and just want you to honestly be in the best spot you've ever been, to elevate yourself, to grow, to be the best version of you. There are still people out here who just want what's best for you, group number four. And I see here within the Eight of Cups that this shows us someone who is walking away, someone who is departing. So as this good woman, this good person comes into your life, you will also find that that will make bad people depart. That will make people depart who are just not in it to see you win it. But that's awesome, group number four, because who wants people around them who are not really, really rooting for them, right? Who wants someone within their lives that is like low-key a hater or a frenemy? I don't think any of us want to experience that. And that's where I can see here within the Ace of Wands that actually you will make new friends because you've got new ideas. You're no longer the same person you were a month, a year, 10 years ago, of course. But the thing here that I see is a divine intervention where this Queen of Cups is giving you more energy and giving you more support and drive. So you're not afraid when other people leave who are not in alignment with you. Quite the contrary, you're like, great. Now I have more space for my things. Now I've got more space 
for my goals, for my business, to build my relationships, to have a romantic relationship, potentially a marriage, kids, and so on. So you see all of these incidents as a win. And to you, you do not feel attached to anything that doesn't serve you anymore. You used to get on your hands and knees for friends or past lovers who were mean to you, still terrible to you, group number four, who were absolutely not supportive, not good people, but you've learned from that. You've overcome this feeling of needing to have someone in your life, even if they were unhealthy. You have healed trauma bonds. You understand that sometimes it is just a chemical reaction within your brain that makes people have the opportunity to stay in your life even though they probably shouldn't because they're not healthy for you. And here in the Five of Swords, the thing is that what comes as a huge surprise is that actually you already know who is departing. You already know who was the frenemy. I see in the Five of Swords that group number four, you are wise beyond your years. You've always been very mature and in a sense also cutthroat when it comes to knowing. Like you just needed a friend to talk to you with their voice cracked or in a certain way and you knew they were lying about something. You just needed a ex-boyfriend to kind of say to you, um, yeah, I'm just at a friend's place and you know something's fishy. You just needed that frenemy to kind of say to you what excuse that they have for not staying in touch or not holding up their part of the agreement or of the promise and you already knew okay they were talking behind your back or they have like other friends that they are putting more importance on like you have a spidey sense you have like a sixth sense group number four so you always know so when it comes to other people and what they really want it's never that big of a surprise to you but let's move further into your reading the knight of crystals shows us a real surprise, okay? Something really unexpected. The Knight of Crystals is the Knight of Fire signs. So think Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have a lot of masculine energy as the suit of crystals is already a phallic suit, which means a masculine suit. Can you see here? The symbol of the crystal is masculine, right? Because it looks like a wand. It looks like a crystal. It's, well, you know where, what I'm getting at. Now, the Knight of Crystals kind of riding in on this horse very forcefully. I want you to know that what this stands for in correlation to the Queen of Cups is that this older female person in your life, so mom, older sister, grandmother, someone who has this matriarch kind of energy, they have found someone for you that would be really fitting. And I mean relationship wise, okay? They want to almost do like an arranged marriage with you. I am joking a little bit, but they're also a bit serious. They have found a potential prospect that they really like. And they're gonna tell you, hey, this person is interested in you too. I think they're a great guy. I know them from this friend. And it's gonna be up to you, group number four, whether you allow this person into your life or not. You may say, no, you don't want to because you wanna meet someone on your own. But you may also think to yourself, well, the Knight of Crystals, why not? They're already vetted. What's the worst that could happen? Then we've got the Five of Crystals. Now, the Five of Crystals shows me that there you will definitely be in a little bit of an internal conflict. But it's okay, group number four, because what is life without a little bit of drama at times? And I don't mean like, you know, heavy, hard drama. I mean just like the fun drama of do I meet this person? Do I go out on a date or am I too shy? Do I think this will be a good match? I'm talking light drama, okay? That's what I see here moving forward. And of course the surprise that someone is trying to play matchmaker with you. And in a way you will have this slightly like happy giddy vibe about you because it is flattering so next up we've got the empress reverse group number four you've worked on yourself you've glowed up a lot and the thing with you and the empress reverse is that now it's also sometimes the time to slow down with the glow up you've done glowing up you've worked a lot on yourself sometimes you also just have to rest on your laurels enjoy what you have created and just look at yourself and also sometimes say enough you know i've done enough i've done a lot look at me i'm shining i'm beautiful i'm a kind person i have so many great traits and it's okay, it's enough now. I don't need to always be working on myself. Sometimes I can also just enjoy myself, be soft with myself, enjoy very much a soft life and not feel like I always need to be working hard because group number four, that is toxic work culture. That is 
a way to see life in which you will end up just overworking yourself and not having fun and the thing is like you can do both it is possible and we need to find a way to get you into having fun being the norm and making you even more successful because group four who doesn't want to have fun while also being more successful and not feeling bad for living their best life so let's move a little more deeply into your reading so we can figure out more unexpected expected surprises and just continue to level you up effortlessly group four so we'll delve more deeply into your prediction about the next unexpected surprises coming to you so we've got the queen of cups again group number four the universe just wants to reiterate this individual in your life and make sure that you know just how important her showing up for you is going to be it's going to mean so much to you and it's also going to remind you of who you would like to become once you are more advanced in age and it doesn't matter what age you're at how emotionally mature that you are she is going to leave an amazing mark on you that reminds you like there are beautiful matriarch energy goddesses out here who want nothing but the best for the younger generation and you want to bring the same to the table once you are in that era once you are in that same position so next up we have the eight of batons now the eight of batons i want you to know that this card shows us that the next surprise coming for you is actually kind of like an enmeshment that you didn't expect. And I do see here with the Knight of Crystals and the Eight of Batons, there's someone with whom your ideas are going to clash with. And you guys know I always tell you precisely how it is. I never hide anything in my readings or choose to just like not add pieces of information. So having a clash of ideas and having a heated discussion is one thing I see in the Eight of Batons, the Knight of Crystals and the Five of Crystals. And here in the High Priestess, I see that this will be going on with someone who is supposedly like a teacher or an expert in their field. But then when you actually deal with them, you realize that they themselves have a little bit of learning to do that they're refusing to do. <laughs> so they feel like they're the expert. They feel like they know everything and they don't want to take any advice on board, especially not from you, group number four. But that doesn't keep you from just telling the truth. That doesn't keep you from being real and direct and just saying how you truly feel about a situation. Next up within the four of coins, I do see that as long as it's not affecting you financially, as long as you're not going up against someone who is paying you or someone who could harm you in a financial sense, it's fine, group number four. Say your opinion. If someone is pretending to be all that and a huge expert at something and you're realizing that actually they've just never had anyone tell them that they need a little bit of extra classes in what they're doing because even they are not that up to date, group number four, strengthen your confidence, be the one to tell them, don't be afraid because unfortunately there are a lot of sharks out here. I have realized this over and over again and I'm currently also realizing that like even if you know someone through a friend or someone was recommended to you, doesn't mean that they will treat you any better and their true colors will show eventually. So when that happens, don't hold back and don't stand down, group number four. Stand tall, proud, remember who you are, and don't allow anyone to intimidate you, all right? You are educated. I see in the High Priestess, you know a lot, and you're never the type of person who uses that or weaponizes that, but when you see someone who is just kind of like bullying others on the understanding that, well, you know, they're a teacher or they're a doctor or they're older or they're a man or whatever it is that makes them particularly feel superior. You just can't stand it, group number four, and you don't need to stand it. You don't need to deal with it. You don't need to allow that to happen around you. I do see here within Start Everything With Love that remind yourself any heated discussion that may arise start it with love always and this is like a tactic that is not just one that helps you in order to have like the safe bet you can fall back on to give yourself the security of saying well 
remember how this started and I started it in love but it's also just going to feel so much better in your body and be so much more in alignment with whom you are when you start everything with love whether it is telling someone the truth telling them that they have to take it down a notch or they have to learn to respect other people or whether you are just freely expressing love you know but in an argument in particular group number four always come from a place of love because that will also soothe the other person to not get too excited or agitated so you can actually get your point across and should they be someone who just has like a huge ego and absolutely can't stand to be told anything in life then at least you know you can always fall back on the fact that yeah I started off with love, I started off in a calm, kind manner, and you're the one that's acting up, not me. And I just want to say this card is from this beautiful deck, which is called Love is Always the Way. And no, this is not sponsored. This is just a beautiful subscriber that sent me this deck. And Shannon let me know in this handwritten note that she felt inspired to create this deck through my videos. She's been following them for years and she just wanted to send it to me so that I could use it and I just think it's so sweet and I want to show appreciation for all of you I want to show appreciation for every single member of the unicorn family and of course especially those of you who go the extra mile of sending something all the way to Switzerland to me that is so incredibly kind thank you so much my beautiful unicorn family so what I'm gonna do now is I will clear and cleanse the space and we'll carry on more deeply into your tarot reading about the next expected surprises that are coming to you so group four you don't have to do anything just continue to lean back relax and enjoy your psychic reading and i'll be right back hello group number four so let's delve a little more deeply into your reading shall we because we are not playing around here so here we've got our spirit animal oracle deck and we will also be using our divination board. So let's see what spirit animal we receive first before we get into our board. So in the antelope spirit, understand life is speeding up. So one surprise that's coming towards you is that everything is happening way more quickly than you expected. You're manifesting more quickly. Life is speeding up in a way that you haven't experienced in a long time. And overall, so group number four, don't forget to document this process, take photos, take little video footages and make sure that you don't miss out on enjoying this time in your life. There will always be ups and downs, but remind yourself that nothing lasts forever. So we have this little flower charm that we intuitively received for you, as well as this rhino charm right here. So I'm just going to show you close up what these look like. So I want you to know here that you have a very gentle time ahead of you. The rhino and the flower just shows me that rather than feeling like you have to see certain coincidences or see certain results, you're being called to trust, to gently trust. Because in case you didn't know, rhinos don't have very good sight. And obviously the flower is a symbol of gentleness. So not really seeing, but still being gentle with yourself and gentle with your surroundings and your progress is imperative at this point, group number four. So I will pull a few more charms out of this bag. Oh, okay, we received the star which landed on Gemini. So a star in your life is a Gemini. If you are a Gemini yourself, then congratulations, group number four. You are definitely allowing your star qualities to shine through and others are seeing it as well. But I just want you to know here with the star and Gemini that this shows that Having a Gemini in your life will give you a huge beacon of hope. And then we also have this teddy bear that landed on Thursday. So towards the end of Thursday, Thursday night, teddy bear cuddle session. I want you to know here, group number four, that is a night of romance, of cuddling, but also feeling really safe because the teddy bear is a symbol of not just cuddles in a way that turns kind of sensual if you know what I mean not like Netflix and chill but actually like cuddling and feeling safe and almost being taken back into this childlike vibe 
where you just felt so good to be in your parents' home, to be in a bed, to have a teddy bear, and just those memories of the times in which you felt safe. It may have not been all the time, group number four. I'm so sorry if your childhood was filled with a lot of moments that lacked safety and closeness and feeling like you actually had parents that looked out for you, but Thursday with the bear emoji is about those moments where you did feel safe and those being replicated now and it comes as a surprise. The spider spirit shows us here that why it comes as a surprise is because you've had to be strong and in a sense also very masculine for such a long time and that when you're allowed to just kind of lean back and you're just being cuddled and taken care of and everything is fine it's almost like a very foreign sensation to you you're almost asking yourself how this is happening why it's happening if it's going to change you know when things are going really well and there are a lot of people who ask themselves um when is something bad going to happen basically so not that you're that extreme it's just an example so that we can get an idea for what this means and how you can have a little bit of unrest within you because everything just feels really safe and you haven't been used to that in such a long time group number four and it is a privilege to feel safe that i think you only realize that you have if it's been stripped away from you at one point and here within this door we've got destiny so sometimes being stripped of your safety being stripped of feeling loved and appreciated and even feeling like you're being treated like a human sometimes it's destined to happen remember one door closes another opens for you let the plans of destiny unravel true so i just want you to understand that as hard as it can be to take and to deal with and it's not like anyone deserves hardship and hurt but sometimes when we're really honest with ourselves and i'm looking at this from my own experiences that nobody deserved but happened to me and i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy with some of these experiences but i've got to say if it wouldn't have happened to me i wouldn't be who i am today i wouldn't be as strong i wouldn't be as level-headed i wouldn't love myself as much i wouldn't know how to set boundaries the way i set boundaries now and it would just overall have made for an easier time in my life and certainly one that is less trauma filled but at the same time i'm happy for every traumatic experience as unfair as it is because at the same time it has taught me so much that i can pass down and pass on to others so they won't need to be in this experience as long or they may never even have to experience it period because i want to teach you and others the skills of standing up for yourself and not settling for something that is way less than you deserve or that isn't right before you even endure it for too long. So next up, we have got a cure for longing. Love is happiness, a spark inside. Live de deliberately and choose boldly. Then you have arrived. So group four, when was the last time you chose something really boldly? When was the last time you made a really bold move? Like just booking a flight and going somewhere, not asking anyone for permission, just doing your thing. Because that's where I can see here that a door needs to open that would really serve you. Because sometimes we think, oh, I'm being selfish or just doing my thing is not what I should be doing right now. Like I should be working, I should be saving, I should be doing X, Y, Z. But let me tell you, sometimes that shifts something within you that you needed in order to make way more money, to be way more confident, to be way more successful. And I see here within the nine of wands, like it's about time group number four, you are overworked, you're close to burnout. Seasonal depression, especially if you live in the Northern hemisphere. I, for example, live in Zurich, Switzerland. It is so gray here. It is so rainy and it really does affect your mood. I notice how my mood on sunny days is so improved. And when the weather is gray, I feel like it's really hard to get through the day. I feel less happy, less elevated, less springy. And I never wanted to admit to myself that I was someone who was affected so strongly by the weather and the sun. 
But I gotta say, recently I have been more honest with myself about how I feel day to day and checking in with how the weather affects that. And I truly feel as though the weather affects a lot of us deeply, more deeply than we even realize. Here, the Nine of Cups, Neun der Kelche in German, is the card of reminding yourself that every option and possibility is open and is doable. So while you may not love where you are right now, geographically speaking, there are planes, there are trains, there are ships, you can go somewhere. And even if you feel as though you can't afford it, maybe when it comes to time or finances and so on, there are ways in which you can make it work for you. Everything is doable, everything is possible. And often we already think about the obstacles before we have tried to do what it is that's on our mind, but you would be surprised, group number four. The Nine of Cups shows us here a lot of optimism, vitality, and good luck. And I see that coming towards you, especially if you take that break. Go to a sunny place, go to a place where you can really relax, you can really lean back, you can actually enjoy a vacation. It's time for you to do that, group number four. It's been too long. And I just want you to remind yourself you're worth it. Because denying yourself of nice things, of rest, of vacations, it is a reflection of not feeling worthy of it, not properly loving yourself. And here within the Six of Cups, you are so loved by a lot of people. Look at that. Look at this little hug. You have friends and family from kind of all over the world, from all different like social classes, if you will. You've got some childhood friends, some new friends that you've made, and just a very eclectic group of people that care about you, that love you, very special people that you also look at and think to yourself, oh, I wish I had more of her confidence. I wish I had more of his work ethic. I mean, whatever it may be. And I do see here that also connecting with childhood friends. So going on a trip with an old friend. And they don't have to be a friend from childhood, but someone that makes you feel like a child again. You know what I mean, group number four? Like when you have that friend that you even wish you had as a kid, that you wish you had that much history with, that is the person that I can see you needing to go on a trip with, needing to have a little time out with, as here within the Nine of Cups, that will bring you so much added luck, so much added abundance, because the Nine of Wands just shows, girl, like, look, you've even got a Band-Aid here, you're looking sad, the suit of wands is all about work, creativity, and so on. Like, you need support. And first and foremost, you got to support yourself. And then you have to look at how you can delegate some tasks because this is just not a vibe. It's not a look for you, group number four. It's time that you take a little vacay. In the moon, we have our intuition that's represented. The moon is symbolic of divine feminine energy. The moon is all about receiving, but also deception. And you will intuitively know when something is deceiving, when you're dealing with deception. And I want you to listen to it the first time and immediately. So think back, group number four, at a time where you signed the dotted line, or you did something, you paid for something, and there was this little pang of like, eh, I'm not sure if this person is trustworthy. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to receive this. I'm not sure if this is actually a good idea. Listen to that, group number four. Don't override your intuition. Don't feel like there's something wrong with listening to your intuition or like you have to rationalize your decision making. You don't need to do that, group number four. The fact that you feel it is enough reason to not do something. And if someone needs more of an explanation or something like that, you know, tell them to literally like file a complaint, send it to the complaint department and they will deal with it and see if there's even anything to be done. Because at the end of the day, group number four, you've got to be happy with your decisions is no one else's business because you are also the only one who will deal with the consequences of your decisions. So why should anyone else have a say, right? Okay, so here we have got the symbol of Venus. Let me just make sure it's all in focus for you. There we go. Here we've got Venus. How fitting, you guys. Look at my nails with these snakes on here and my pet snake. 
is literally called Venus. I love her. We have the same birthday. And Venus is the planet of beauty, affection, aesthetics. You guys know my snake is so aesthetic. Harmony as well as balance. And that showing up here within your reading shows us that your beauty is something that's very important, group number four. And what will come as a huge surprise is that actually you get more beautiful with age. And taking good care of your beauty is something that you may have neglected even if you go through season, seasonal depression, sometimes it can even be hard to like brush your hair, brush your teeth, take a shower and so on because you just don't feel like it. But just know here, like your beauty is something that you shouldn't take for granted because there's a lot of people who wish they had your beauty and there's also a lot of people who look at your beauty and think, wow, this person is stunning. So group number four, I just want you to know that your guides are reminding you, don't be surprised if others find you more attractive than you find yourself, group number four, because you may not be seeing yourself accurately or through the eyes of an observer that actually sees you like in your element when you're doing things that you love, you're passionate about, when you're speaking the way you like use your hands, your gestures, the way that your brows raise and your mouth curls up, like the corners of your mouth curl up when you smile, the way that you look at people, the intensity in your eyes. I want you to not underestimate that, group number four, because you have in the past and then you have settled for things that you would never tell your younger self to settle for. You settle for things where if you could see yourself from even my eyes, group number four, you'd be like, go for the most kindest, handsome, gorgeous person on this planet because you deserve it because you're on that same level. So group four, I will clear and cleanse the space and then I'll be back so we can delve even more deeply into your psychic reading about the next unexpected surprises that are coming to you. So just hold on tight, continue to relax into the space and I'll be right back. Welcome back group number four. Did you miss me? Now let's move. Oh, okay. A little more deeply into your reading. We've got three cards that popped out of the deck before I could even begin to shuffle. And the three cards are Freya, Gaia, and Archangel Michael. So let's figure out what this means. With Freya, we've got a message of phases and cycles. There is a beginning within every ending. Illusions are revealed and released. So group four, I want you to know that even when things end, that means that there is a new beginning for a fresh chapter. So even when you feel a little down and out about something that you've known coming to an end, something that you were maybe not quite ready to let go of, there is always a blessing behind every ending. Trust me. Next up within Gaia and the Earth Connection, your guides are trying to say to you to be mindful of the planet. Stay grounded and, in a sense, come back to Earth as in connect with Earth again. When's the last time you really went out for a walk in the nature or even took a long hike? The thing here within Gaia is that what comes as an unexpected surprise in connectivity to Freya is that you will feel very much inclined to go out in nature and even to book a little nature getaway. One thing I also want to say with Freya and Gaia is that if you have a house plant that is looking a little tired, let it go, all right? With every ending of a house plant that you couldn't keep alive, there is an opportunity for a new beginning to pick a house plant that you can keep alive group number four, and it's fine. All right, Archangel Michael is trying to tell you your plant is going to go to plant heaven, even if you fail to keep it alive. Don't blame yourself, group number four. And furthermore, on a more serious note, Archangel Michael also brings the message that you're safe, your angels are close by. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur at this point in time. So the thing here with Archangel Michael is that it's time for you to trust in the fact that you have made the best decisions you possibly can and any kind of lessons you learned along the way were lessons that you were meant to receive. However, 
things are not always going to be challenging. You're not always going to live a life filled with lessons. There will be times where it's just blessings and it's just you and earth connection. Another thing that I see here is we've got the continent of South and North America. So I want you to know that that showing up within your reading is indicative of this area of the world being a place of exploration for you. We've got the Ten of Wands. Now, the Ten of Wands shows me that you're feeling kind of stuck and captured. It could be that you're feeling that way when it comes to your career, like you don't really know how to grow, how to acquire or amass the type of income so you can live the life of your dreams if you continue on in this way. Maybe parts of you also feels like you don't deserve what you really want or like what you really desire out of life is actually something that's reserved for a different type of person but not you so in the ten of wands i definitely want you to quit with the self-deprecating thoughts group number four and to remember that your thoughts shape your personality and your personality creates your personal reality and the thing here is that if you are constantly feeling like you are a burden and you're kind of overbooked with work and different kind of tasks that aren't really helping you feel better in life, then of course at some point it's all going to be too much. Of course at some point you're going to feel burnt out and it's going to be hard to even get up in the morning. But group number four, the fun thing about, well, fun thing, there's nothing fun about that, but the the good news is that this can be changed and readjusted. So group number four, overworking yourself and burnout, these are all things that should be taken really seriously because group four, nobody wants to see you in a state of being burnt out. Nobody wants to see you feeling down and out. We've got the two of swords that popped out as well as the ace of cups. Now, I want you to know we have a very interesting combination because for one, the Ace of Cups shows a new beginning for a romantic relationship and a peaceful new beginning. So this is someone who is drama free. They know what they want. They're not trying to get you into a situation that you don't want to be in. They're very clear about their wants and needs. And here within the Two of Swords, the thing is, it will be hard for you to make up your mind. And this comes as a surprise because right now as you're watching this reading you may think that you know what you want group number four you may think to yourself i want exactly this this and this in my next relationship in a romantic partner when it comes to love i know exactly what i want but i do see here within the two of swords that when it comes down to it you're actually a little shy to make a decision even though a decision needs to be made you're actually the one who's almost putting this poor little individual into a situationship, all right? And maybe because of some of the past experiences you've had, some traumas you've experienced, you don't want to get in a relationship too quickly, especially before really knowing the person. So the start of relationships for you are fun and interesting and even being in a committed relationship is something that you're good at. However, to get to that point, is not easy for you and i think it's great that you're vetting who you might end up with group number four furthermore i just want to also clarify if you are already in a committed relationship the ace of cups brings us a wave of new love new infatuation also feeling attracted to your person in a way that you haven't felt before we have some animal companions here too, group number four. We have a dove here and we have got a crow or a raven here. Now, having these polar opposites, a completely black and completely white bird, one stands for kind of peace and goodwill. The other one has a little bit of a dark mystical aura and can be the companion of the witch. I just want you to know that the message we've got here is the unexpected thing is that you will see white and black birds in particular. And another thing is that none of these either mean good or bad. 
It is simply guidance to where you can move to next. When you see the white bird show up within your life, you know that this is pulling you towards a connection with another person that is a healthy one. When you see a black bird show up for you, you know that you're being called to focus on entering this new phase and cycle that has been opened up for you in your life with confidence and not feeling as though you aren't ready or you aren't like strong enough, educated enough, whatever the story or the tale is that you may tell yourself at times to leave that behind. And to remind yourself here that also having shiny object syndrome is something to look out for because crows, I believe, have shiny object syndrome where they will basically steal shiny objects and collect them. And the thing here is that taking something that isn't yours just because it looks shiny is something to clear out completely out of your thought pattern and that means even having the idea for example of seeing where something can go with someone that you know isn't single or finding a piece of jewelry finding money finding a watch and thinking even for a split second oh should i keep this well you know finders keepers uh the frog spirit and freya is telling you to never do that and you may have always given everything back that you found you may have always put it in a space where whoever lost it could find it regardless of what it was but I do see here that what comes as a surprise to you next is that you will find something as you're out and about that doesn't belong to you, that someone has clearly lost, and it is very valuable. And you will have this split second thought of, Oop, should I keep this or should I let it go? Let's see what it's gonna be. I'm just gonna intuitively pick a charm. Oh, okay, we've got a violin here. So it could quite literally be that you find an old violin that belonged to like a grandparent or you find it in an antique store, like this instrument that is worth a lot, but something just doesn't feel right about selling it. Another thing about finding the violin symbol in connectivity to what we just spoke of is you finding something that is worth a lot and was made by someone who works in the music industry. So finding a watch or money, a wallet, some sort of belonging that is originally from someone who works in music, who makes music. So it is connected to music, it's connected to the violin specifically, and your guides are telling you not to pick this up. Don't take it, don't try to claim it, don't make it yours, just give it back, group number four, because otherwise that is going to be bad luck for you. Here within the Sandpiper spirit, we've got being playful, having fun. So we had a bit of a serious message about something you didn't expect that you will be able to either claim or return to its rightful owner or leave in its place and we already spoke about what to do and now the sandpiper spirit is trying to remind you to have fun you always know what the right thing to do is and it can be tempting at times group number four when you see yourself living in a world where it seems as though nobody is actually doing the right thing even when people are watching so oh maybe for once you should also just not do the right thing and it's not because you're trying to harm anyone but it's just like this act of rebellion where you see everybody else not playing by the rules and then you're like well if no one is playing by the rules why should i but group number four you're the type of person where you do that and it doesn't work out for you you are not that kind of individual you are a clean person energetically speaking and trust me those who are in a difficult energetic predicament they have their own karma and their own struggles that we don't always see and that also doesn't always come immediately and i just want to remind you that you are in a way better position continuing on with your goody two shoes attitude than trying to become someone whom you are not group number four so have fun in your comfort zone you're just never meant to be someone that plays unfair or rough or that takes something that doesn't belong to them it's not in your nature group number four and 
that is actually a compliment, isn't it? To just know, okay, this kind of behavior is not in my nature. I might as well never even start it or get into it. And we have another bird. So birds are very important. You will notice them more frequently after you've received this reading. And I see here that they symbolize a time of celebration, fun, and enjoyment for you. Having some bird companion in your life, group number four, will also remind you of the fact that it is okay to have fun. Aren't birds in a way very funny? Now we've got the eagle that showed up for you. Group number four, we can't make this up. Like, Spirit speaks so strongly to me these days within these readings, it's incredible. So the eagle showed up now, another bird, triumph over troubles and obstacles you will be triumphant that is what the eagle represents and i also just want us to look into the symbolism of the bird what does receiving a bird really mean so i will just put your pyrite here to the side group number four on our little foliage and get out our big book of symbols <laughs> so we're getting very serious here now let's move into it bird 238 one thing that we've got is a quote know that the psyche has its own fame whether known or not that soul can flame like feathers of a bird grow into your own plumage brightly so that any tree is a marvelous city I'm not sure what I think of that quote, but okay, we read it. So recently, a small carving of a bird was found in a cave in Hohlfels, Germany. It turns out to be one of the oldest works of art ever found. Wow. It is only two inches long, but very powerful in its simplicity. It really is. Look at this, group number four. Very interesting. It is an image of a water bird, its wings folded as if it is about to dive. It makes us realize that 30,000 years ago, someone was able to move between the worlds, like the bird who can move between the elements from the outer world of the senses to an inner vision. Something moved this carver to begin to shape a piece of ivory into a new form and an image of a bird. And with this, something was changed. The world was no longer the same. It was this shift into a creative act that made us human. Wow, I love that. It's very beautiful. And we have more depictions throughout time of birds. It is also their song that makes birds so remarkable. Their voices are not only the voice of the spirit as we usually think, they are also the voices of the instincts deep down in our body. The sound of blood and bone, tissue and nerves, the instincts of the animals. So here, this is the Ba, it's called Soul Bird, as the manifestation of the fullness of a person's individuality, surviving after death and always returning to the body and the tomb. This is from the Book of the Dead of Ch Chenena, 18th dynasty, so about 1550 to 1295 BCE in Egypt. This depiction is a flock of crows cleaning the corpses to the bare bones. Um, it shows like the darkest place, the deepest depression, and it is from Germany from 1624. And then here for the number five, we have a line drawing showing both the external and internal structure of a bird as if suggesting transcendence. A bird by Bert Kupferman, pen and ink drawing on water watercolor paper, 2008 United States. So this is just a little bit of more inspo about birds. I will read on just a little bit for you, group number four, so we can get more into the symbolism about these birds showing up for you. So the bird singing wakes us up in the morning. They call us to our lives. If you hear birds singing, chirping, group number four, I want you to know it is meant to be a wake-up call for you specifically. The birds know their way. They read the signs of the seasons. They know when it is time to break up and leave for the next long journey. Having built in what seems like both a sextant and compass, they take directions from above and below. They follow the sun, moon, and stars, and when covered by clouds, the Earth's magnetic field as they fly across continents and oceans. Deep inside us, our own instincts guide us where to go. We know what is true, 
and we respond in turn with our own singing. Song is existence, said Rilke, Rilke. We embody the spirit through song. In this dialogue of ascending and descending, listening and expressing, we may find our own soul bird guiding us on our journey. Your soul birds are here, group number four, and I hope that you found this insightful and interesting for us to get into some symbolism too. So having so many birds show up for you can have a meaning when it comes to song, speaking up, being very much vocal about what you desire, but also a meaning of connectivity, of knowing when to instinctually make the next move. Now, group number four, I'm going to clear and cleanse the space and then I'll be back with you and we can move a little bit more deeply into your psychic reading about the next unexpected surprises coming to you. So just continue to relax, hold on tight, and I will be right back. All right, group number four, let's carry on with your reading, shall we? So let's see what else spirit wants you to receive and wants you to hear about upcoming surprises for you. If nothing is certain, everything is possible. So the message we've got here is a big congratulations to your blank canvas. Use this opportunity to envision and create exactly what you desire. This is the moment where you have the choice to craft things as you wish them to be from now on. Be vivid in your imagination, dream bigger than you have before, and get excited about what is yet to come. When you are uncertain, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Go all in and dream big. Affirm with me. I am the creator of my destiny. Say it again, group number four. I am the creator of my destiny. And one last time for good measure. I am the creator of my destiny. Yes, group number four. Aren't we the creators of our destinies? I truly believe that we are. I truly want to bring you this message that an unexpected surprise is that whenever you've got a blank slate, whenever you feel as though you have to start from zero, be happy, be excited, because it is way more difficult to clean up a messy old page than to start fresh with a blank one, with one where everything is possible, you can create everything, there are no scribbles or drawings on there already, there's nothing to get in the way of you creating new art and you doing something that is completely inspired and fresh and authentic. So remember that new beginnings and blank slates are always huge opportunities to immediately create things the way you want them to be. So let's add some letters into your reading to group number four. So we received D, E, M, as well as I. All right. So we've got made. And another thing that we have is dime. All right. So I see a fresh slate here with dime. It's like starting without a dime, you know, dime being important. And I just want to remind you that so many people you look up to started off without a dime. I mean, including myself, group number four, like I started my business without a dime. And I definitely want you to know here that if nothing is certain, everything is possible. If you're not sure what tomorrow is gonna bring, anything is possible tomorrow. You may get a phone call that changes your life. You may write an email that changes everything for you. You may start a business that is going to end up being a fountain of abundance, happiness, and joy. Never rule anything out, group number four, especially when it isn't certain what's coming. So with the queen of batons, I do just want you to know that spirit and your guides, they're trying to say to you to take action. If you're not happy with how your financial situation is, what will come as an unexpected surprise is that when you focus on dimes, on little things, it will be hard to move forward. It will be hard to make what you want to make. And when you focus on the big fry, the big fish, there is, for one, less competition because a lot of people don't have the courage to swim in the pond where there are sharks and to become a shark themselves. Not that sharks live in ponds, but you know what I mean. And you will also strengthen your confidence. You will also learn how to sell yourself and you will need less selling 
in order to generate the type of outcome you desire. Whether you want a raise at your job or you want to generate more sales in your business or you just overall want to level up your finances. Now the Four of Swords shows us that it's important you keep your goals and aspirations and what you're doing next to yourself. Group number four, this may come as a surprise, but maybe you also already felt it. It's important that you don't overshare at this point in time because not everybody is rooting for you. Not everyone believes in you. And even if someone doesn't have like ill will or an ill intent towards you, you just don't need any energy that isn't supportive, especially if it's like a very worried friend or parent. No, group number four, we don't need that right now. We need a very open, clean energy of everything being possible. And in order to stay in that vibration and frequency, sometimes you have to remove yourself for a little bit from people that you can feel are really heavy or really negative about a lot of things. Now, group four, this reading has already been so long and <laughs> incredibly intricate here on YouTube. And I don't want to make it too crazy long, so I am going to extend this video and I will post the extension onto Patreon before I even upload this YouTube version. And a lot of you are already patrons. I think I'm almost at like a thousand of you beautiful members of the Unicorn Army on Patreon. And the thing with Patreon is just that I can read for a smaller, more precise audience, so everything is more accurate and it's uncensored, nothing is off limits. And because you guys already know my readings from YouTube, you kind of know what to expect on Patreon, but better, more intricate, more detailed. So you already know that you will love being a part of the Patreon squad and community. So at this point, you guys, I am going to finish the prediction here on YouTube. We're gonna close it off, but I'm so looking forward to seeing you in my upcoming video. You guys, I'm always going to be producing YouTube content in 4K in amazing quality, the highest quality I can. But in order to not make these videos deadly long, I'm going to put the rest onto Patreon, as already mentioned. So group four, thank you so much for being here and for spending this divine time and space with me. I hope that you found this reading insightful and fun, and I can't wait to catch up with you during one of my upcoming readings.